Joe Rogan has finally told his audience, sort of, to vote Republican. In his episode with Aaron Rodgers, Aaron asks him, you know, what do you tell these people, you know, who had their businesses and lives destroyed by the lockdowns? And he goes, vote Republican. And then they both laugh. And then uh, admittedly, I laughed when I heard it. And then Joe's like, well, they were going to do it anyway. You know, a million people switched to the Republican Party, I think, in 2021. And he's right. Joe also made another really interesting point in his show that 75 percent of TV advertising in 2020 was pharmaceutical companies. That explains a whole lot. So we got those stories. We got Joe Biden. He's calling Trump supporters fascists, mm. semi-fascism, sorry, doubling down. And now Donald Trump is calling for either a, an immediate redo of the 2020 election or that he should be reinstated as president because we learned the FBI actively interfered in the in the election by not doing their job. I mean, they, they did so much. They wouldn't investigate Hunter Biden. Whistleblower came out and said this because they didn't want to they didn't want to influence the election. But then they went to Facebook and said, hey, here's some Russian disinformation. Watch out for that, which is actively interfering. And, and violating 1A. So there's no excuse at this point. And there's questions about why they're going after people over Ashley Biden's diary because she's not a federal employee. She's not in government. She's a private citizen who left her book somewhere. And the feds got involved over this. Something dirty is happening. We're going to talk about all that plus much, much more. Before we get started, my friends, head over to TimCast.com. Become a member. You want to support our work. We're going to have a members only show coming up for all of you. But also, it's a big week for us. We put out a song and uh, it's done really, really well. For those that aren't familiar, we released a song Friday, Only Ever Wanted, w- wanted. Only Ever Wanted <laughs> on Timcast Records. And um, thank you all so much for supporting the song. To everybody who bought it, you're, you're really helping us. The link is in the description below. If we can get a certain amount of sales, we can actually chart. And the goal is, simply put, I, we here, uh, I'm sure many other uh, you know, independent media, we're trying to force the cultural establishment to acknowledge. And, and we're also trying to invade their space, take over. What I want to do is... We want to create a parallel culture and a parallel economy so that people won't feel scared to say no over the woke cult ideology. That if they're like, oh, if I speak up, I'll lose my job. Well, we need to create spaces where people know there will be industry available for them. Not to mention, we do music here. We all do. Carter uh, engineered and produced the song, something that I wrote, and uh, it's just something we wanted to make. And I'll I'll say this too. We didn't expect it. We didn't expect it to be trending to hit number two in iTunes. I just was like, we're going to start making music. We made Pop Culture Crisis, we made Tales from the Inverted World, we made Chicken City, and to varying degrees, they've been successful. And we weren't doing it thinking we were going to be the biggest shows in the world. We're, you know, obviously we we would hope if that was the case. And I think there's a, there's a bit of um, unexpected backfire in the sense that the song took off and did so well, we're getting a whole bunch of attention from people who are really mad at us, the left. These leftist commentators are really attacking us over this. And uh, you know what? You know, so be it. This is what we're trying to do. And this is what we get involved in. So check out the song Only Ever Wanted. It's our second release, our first official release under Timcast Records, I guess we're calling it, with a band called Timcast. I don't know what, what, you, I don't know what you want me to, want me to say. But uh, we also released Will of the People. If, if you guys really want to support us, the song is 69 cents. It's the cheapest you can make it. We're not trying to make money off this. We're trying to have an impact, and we're trying to build an industry for, for more bands, for more music that can resist the wokeness and succeed. So... You know, I'll also do this. I'll shout out Tom McDonald because he's got way better music than we do. All I want to see happen is a space to be developed around people who can say no to the cult and have an impact. And if you guys went out and bought Fake Woke by Tom McDonald, that every single person who watches this did, he'd hit number one on the Billboard charts. I'm happy with that. But I also know that we're going to do what we have to do on our end with what we can do. And if you want to support us, link is in, is in the description below. So uh, uh, again, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel. Joining us today, joining us today, we have Drew Hernandez. Thank you guys for having me, man. I, I think it's uh, interesting times. <laughs> uh, Monkeypox is all over the place. People are having to watch their backs, literally. Uh, I mean, hey the now. simulations hey shifting. Now. All of a sudden, the left loves the FBI going after <laughs> Trump. It's good times, yeah. Uh, it's refund the police. Here, yeah. here we are again. Yeah, I so. love that they're like, they're like, we're anti-fascist, but support federalized, lo- centralized law enforcement going after people. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Here we are. All right. Uh, I'm going to ruin you. I'm going to mess your last name up. Is it Budazoni, right? Budazoni. Budazoni. I said boot. Yeah, happy Aldo. to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, introduce yourself. Who are you? Yeah, I'm an independent uh, reporter and journalist uh, based out of Dallas. Uh, I've been covering a lot of the drag shows, unfortunately, in the area. It is it is a crazy time. Uh, we got the left propping up Big Pharma, uh, propping up these group, these, uh, you know, these these crazy people, these drag shows. So it's interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, hey, everybody. Ian Crossland here. Happy to see you guys. And I wanted to mention a couple things before we get started. One is about the music that we've been working on. Music and the arts is kind of like there is competition in the arts. Like who's going to get number one? Who's going to get number two? Who's going to play on main stage at the Grammys? Who's not? But at the same time, it's the kind of industry where you make each other better. The better music that comes out, the people listen to it, then they get more inspired. They get more real. And you start to hear rock and roll. Like, And they were like, why all these great vocalists in the ni early 90s in Seattle with this grunge scene? Why Chris Cornell? Um, what's his name? Uh, Eddie Vedder and, and all these phenomenal. Because they were making each other better. They were seeing each other and inspiring each other. So keep doing that. I love how you said, what's his name? Yeah, what's like, his name? Eddie Vedder, my hero. <laughs> that one guy. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you I was got it wrong. Him. You can't be competitive. It's about call... doing your best. True. Yeah. It's True. not about being number one. That it's is. about doing your best. It's about elevating someone else to experience it as well. And then they'll, they'll, you'll automatically you end up becoming number one because they love you so much. The second part is I want to apologize to everybody that worked on Breaking Bad, the TV show. <gasps> Talked about it on Friday, and I misrepresented the show. Walter White did, was. Did you watch it? No, but enough people that I trust have told me Walter White was trying to make money to it, that when he died that he would have money for his family he wasn't trying to get money for the treatment mm. i will he, he, though say it is it is a component the show was pharmaceutical propaganda hmm. we're talking about in 2020 75 percent of the commercial space being pharmaceutical companies i think breaking bad also was a pharmaceutical propaganda <laughs> piece and we Just can talk about that later if you guys want to real quick it's not the main re i'm watching it i'm on season two i'm like i'm, all, I'm also on season three it, it he, he he tells there's people who are going to pay off his bills and he tells them to f off so it's like kind of, but not really about that. Anyway, we will we'll talk about yeah. that. Lydia's here. Before we get into our Breaking Bad conversation again, I have to read the super chat real fast. It's really short. It says, only ever wandered is the Joe Biden version, which I love. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. Barry. Oh, man. <laughs> Seamus. Seamus, we need you. It. Only yeah. ever wandered. <laughs> only <laughs> ever wandered. Yeah. All right, let's get going. Yeah. All right. Check this out from the Post Millennial. Vote Republican, Joe Rogan, on how Americans can protect your freedom. Well, Bye. everybody knows that Dr. Joe Rogan is who you go to for your political and medical advice. <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. Calm down, YouTube. And uh, here's what happened. Joe Rogan and Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers got into it, into the, got into the harms of COVID policies in a recent episode of The Experience. And Rogan took the opportunity to blast Democrats and give a boost to Republicans. Vote Republican, he said, in response to Rogers' question about what Americans should do about it. Quote, no one who was alive today had ever experienced a true pandemic. And I'm hoping that now that this is over, people are going to, you know, recognize that some serious errors were made and not repeat those. That's the best you can get out of it. So what do you tell those people? Roger said, vote Republican. Rogan said, Rogers chuckled. That's what a lot of them are going to do anyway. Wow. More than a million people transferred over to the Republican Party, I think, in 2021 alone. But, you know, you look at guys like Ron DeSantis, who kept Florida open and had some pretty reasonable policies in terms of like, what to do about COVID. And, you know, he mapped it out on television. Full stop. DeSantis did not keep it completely open. They did shut down, but eventually faster than everybody, than many others did reopen. There are a bunch of red states that never locked down. Christy Nome, for instance, they threw a parade for her. Mm -hmm. He was widely criticized for this, where he was saying, we need to protect our elders. We need to make sure that medical care is available for those people and everyone else should be able to do whatever you want to do and protect your freedom. Now, this is the crazy thing. Joe has taken the bold step of laughing and telling people to vote Republican. He's often said he was a liberal. He's defended all of that. He's like, people call me right wing, but I'm a liberal. And, and he is. He like, he's in favor of universal basic income. Now he's telling people to vote Republican. But I feel like it's not even an, an endorsement of, of re the Republican Party. I feel like the Overton window has shifted so far left that it's, it's almost like a rejection and vote against the people that are going so far liberal. Mm. Um, I don't think it's like, you know, a, a, a typical endorsement of the party as a whole. Yeah, there was a, a, a this graph that we've showed a long time ago where it's like where the political parties are. And they, they created this this the spectrum where it was economic left and right. And and um, I think like a social justice left and right. The Democrats were all extremely hyper concentrated in racial and economic socialist policy. And the Republicans were spread out away from the social justice stuff, but ver varying from socialist all the way to laissez-faire capitalist. Mm -hmm. you gotta that, be, that was crazy. You got to be careful about calling leftism liberalism as well, because there is an idea of like liberalism mm -hmm. is you want to be free and open with ideas and let kids kind of explore the world. But sexualizing children mm -hmm. is not I don't think that's liberty. I don't think that that's doing justice to children. It can warp them in their later years. This is this is, I think, on par with what Maggie Nawaz refers to as like up and down or something. Is it, does, it, does he call it up and down? I think so, like the axes. Yeah, because yeah. like the, the you know he, he talks about how maybe 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 he doesn't say up and down, but he talks about how religious zealotry is not left or right. 
It's it's right. it's idea. It's something different. And if you've got people who have a cult ideology that doesn't really fit into any of these political spectrum, like sp- political sections or segments, then it, we got to acknowledge that it's, it's not liberal. It's not left. Like Jacobin, for instance, they're socialists. They're leftists, but they're pro free speech. They rag on the FBI all the time. They rag on the Democrats. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I can respect that, I guess. I don't agree with the socialism part, though. So I guess maybe Rogan's I think Rogan's I mean, in the context of these statements, he's talking about the pandemic, right? He's talking about the way that COVID was handled. And I think a lot of people are just fed up and they see through just exactly everything at this point. I mean, take a look at Fauci's riding off into the sunset in December, apparently. They're shifting gears and shifting the simulation. Politico is putting out articles, literally changing the narrative, blaming the vaccine rollout on Trump now. So all the negative effects and all that will be blamed on President Trump coming forward. Dr. Burks is coming out and saying, oh, we knew the whole time they weren't effective. They're saying this. The CDC coming out and saying the same thing. Uh, there was a the, uh, the CNN, I don't know, she was some kind of medical something that was like huge on masks. Vienna Wen? Yeah, she was like huge yeah. on ma- Now she's and come lockdowns. out and said that, now she's come out and said the masks uh, damaged my own child. So like, it's like, I think people get exhausted at some point. Like it goes beyond politics. It's like, I'm, I'm being driven in this direction. I'm being driven in that direction. CNN keeps telling me this. Okay, now they're changing their mind. And it's just like this, this constant just exhaustion of the mind it's- where the cult begins to push you and push you. And I think the people that are waking up are just getting fed up. It's got to break down at some point, right? Like this is it. They, they, someone posted a meme and it was just like, it was Janine Gar- Garofalo's quote, I think it was. And it said something like, if you vote, the only way someone can become a Republican is that there's something wrong with them. Hmm. You you can't be an open-minded, well, you know, thinking individual and vote Republican or something like that. Hmm. And I'm like, that's not an argument about anything. Like you're literally being like the Republican bad. Like you didn't say that. Tell me why they're mad and why you think they're wrong to be mad. But that idea, I'm like, if that's what, the, I don't know if that quote is actually from or it was a meme, right? But this idea is laughable that people would share it. Like, you've fallen for every major hoax that's happened. Every single one. If there's one thing that gives me, a, 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 that gives me hope, that keeps me white-pilled, and re- reassures me that we are on the correct side, is that we've not fallen for all of these hoaxes. Hmm. Maybe once or twice we were like, hey, you know, what's that all about? And then it comes out like, oh, okay, that was a hoax. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the left and liberals... Every single hoax, every time. And you know, you know what it is? I think a lot of it, they want to fall for. They wanted Jesse Smollett's story to be true. Mm-hmm. It was great. Right. But it was just so glaringly obvious the dude was making up nonsense. Anybody. Anybody with a brain. So at what point do the cult leaders lose that ability to convince ignorant people that these hoaxes are real? At what point do the, do the masses just say, like, dude... You've lied every single time. I'm over it. I have some friends on Facebook from Los Angeles back when I was doing a lot of theater. You call it, consider them liberal, I guess. I don't know. But we were talking about the student loans. I'm like, where's the money coming from? And some people are like, I heard that it was going to be, they were just going to charge it off to the tax, to the loan companies. I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. I'm like, yo, look, the, uh, Peter Ducey questions the the spokes. What's her what's her title? Kareem, G- the press yeah, secretary. That's her. Yeah. The press secretary. Where's the money coming from? She right. dodges the question three times in the interview. <laughs> I love how nobody knows her name. And yeah. so when I I She's know so I can't forgettable. even forgetable. Jean Pierre. Yeah, yeah. Kareem, <laughs> Kareem, yeah, yeah, Kareem, yeah. Kareem Jean Pierre. Uh, yeah. I post the video yeah. to my friends in this liberal chat wherever you were mostly, and everyone's just like silent in awe at realizing that they're snowballing the American people. They're going to end up charging people tax money to pay for their own loans ahead of time. So it's like an accelerated repayment to Sally Mae. Like that's unconscionable. And I cannot imagine that'll pass. I can't, if, if Biden's proposing it, shoot it down because that is not, you don't make us pay our own loans back early. That doesn't do anybody any justice. Like, I, I don't understand like the rejection of, of like knowing how things are going to play out. Like everybody should have a house, right? Everybody should have a meal. Everybody should have their loans forgiven, but like it doesn't work. It's not pragmatic. Like, why are they so behold? Why are they so stuck to these these uh, these fantasies? I think I think they actually want the opposite. And I don't mean the average person. I think the average liberal Democrat, liberal or Democrat or leftist, they genuinely want people to have these things, but they're easily led astray. If you look at capitalism, uh, people have air conditioners, people have refrigerators, people have clean running water, people have nicer and nicer things. Now we got people sitting down with widescreen. You can get a wide, like 75 inch TV for like 500 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. You go to Best yeah. Buy, it's like mm-hmm. everybody's got one. Yeah, capitalism is making everybody very, very wealthy. But you know what I think? I think a lot of the higher profile people don't like that. 
You will own nothing mm. and you will be happy. happy. They're looking at the overconsumption. They don't want everyone to live in luxury. They think that causes problems, that causes climate change. So what are they saying? They want to get rid of the airlines. Surprise, surprise, the airlines are like spiraling out of control with mass retirements and cancellations. They're getting what they want. They don't want regular people to be able to do these things. And here's what it boils down to. They're always ragging on, you see them ragging like Jeff Bezos has a $130 million yacht or whatever. But what they really, what, what, they, what these powerful elites, these, these climate change people, and this is not an indictment or a, this is not support or opposition to the, the idea of climate change. They want you all to stop having access to vehicles, to gasoline, to cheap food, so that they can keep access to all those things. If you aren't allowed to fly, mm -hmm. then they don't have to worry about when they fly because their contribution to climate change is minimal. You see them all flying in private jets. Mm -hmm. All the private jets flew to Europe for the climate change conference. You know what they're really saying? What, what they're, they're, they're speaking words, right? But the real, the, the real thing they're saying is, how can we take it all away from the working class people so that we can keep it? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it's it's foolish to believe that tyranny somehow just uh, disappears out of uh, out of planet Earth or out of society or out of mankind. Right. It's like it, it never leaves. There's there's always going to be like an entity of tyranny somewhere on the globe, wherever you look. And I think if Americans literally believe that, like if you're sitting there saying, you know, that could never happen to America. Like you're, you're just, you've lost your mind. Like you're losing, you have a losing mindset, whether you're on the left or whether you're on the right. Like, e even if you're someone that's like, you know, I just, I, I love my right wing politician. And that, that person is just always going to, you know, come through and save everything. It's like you, you could never let your guard down and put yourself mentally in a position where you're just like going to be free sailing for the rest of your life. I mean, obviously we all want that, but to think that tyranny is just somehow just going to you know, disappear and it's never going to pop its head up. That's just a literally naive, you know, way of thinking. And in, 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 in my opinion, the, 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 the independent media, moderates, libertarians, conservatives, you know, whatever this faction is, I don't, I don't like saying the right because not everybody is, mm -hmm. but we need something like there's this app called Thunderclap mm -hmm. where you would all what you would do is you would sign up for it. You'd click a button and then it would be like, do you accept the terms? And if you put yes, at, on the same day, at the same time, everyone who agreed would tweet out. It would take take your Twitter account and tweet out the exact same message, causing a, a, an instant trend. It was called Thunderclap. Hmm. The, uh, there needs to be something like this to help people organize. The left has institutions that help them organize and remain organized. The hmm. right and the liberty-minded people need something similar so that you can very easily direct some kind of action on things. I agree. Because right now it's it's so fractured and, and, and just across the board, and that's difficult. When you're an individualist, of course, you're not going to be as organized as a cult. Yeah. You know, I had an interesting interaction the other day. I don't know the name of the company, but where I live, they want to install all of this remote access to like your thermostat and to your, 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 your air in your house. And even to the point of like getting into your gated community, like it's all access through your phone. And like they approached me and they're like, hey, you, you, need, you need to sign this paper so we can come in and have your consent to, uh, you know, remote access your thermostat, to remote access uh, data in your phone, to have all the data from your phone that we can collect for this company so that we can have that on a daily basis. Like I'm sitting there and like, she's like expecting me to be stupid. She's like, oh, you just need to sign it. It's gonna be convenient because then you'll be able to just access, you know, the gated community with your phone, the thermostat, you can access it from your home. And it's like, it's an entire smart home, right? And I'm like, it was interesting because I'm sitting there, I'm reading, I'm reading the contract before I assign my name on the line. And the first thing it says is you are giving consent to the provider and to the, uh, the owner, right. To have remote access to all of this technology Oof. out of your phone. And then it gets even worse. And it's like, you are also giving consent to, uh, give third party data that we compile on your phone directly. It doesn't even explain what data. And I'm sitting there reading this and like, I'm like, Hey, I'm not signing this. I was like, what, what kind of data? Like, what are you guys talking about here? You're going to have remote access to my thermostat. I can't say where I live, but you know, I'm pretty sure people will find out where it is, but like, I'm not, 
that that's how they take it away. And it's like, I'm this was the interesting part, Tim, because when I started like saying that and pushing back and asking questions, she came in and she was like, yeah, you know, the lawyers told us that, you know, if there are people that think it's kind of weird um, and they push back, they told me to just let them know. And I'm like, so if I don't sign this, am I going to get kicked out where I'm living? She's like, no, it's fine. We, we just wanted to see how many signatures we could get. Wow. Wow. Well, they, they already started doing this at my, in my apartment. I came back one day and they replaced my, my key lock with one of those touch pads so that they can get in at any time and look at the apartment. And, you know, I'm sure it's I already signed it away when I first signed. But I think this this points to the bigger cultural phenomenon that we've been sold on this this society of convenience. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a lie. It's, it's a total hoax. Right. <clears throat> that if, if you get something more convenient, that you're going to be happier. Um, and this has been happening forever. Right. We went from the fax machine to the email or the horse buggy to the car and all these modes of communication and transportation that are supposed to make our lives better and more convenient are we any less stressed are we any less anxious are we any less busy that and so people already know and they've already seen that we will sell our 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 freedoms for convenience so why not push it a little bit further why not put a microchip in your body and that'll help you read your own your own body levels better and your blood level and they, they talked about this at, at the World Economic Forum. It's not just that, but it goes the other way too. There's a, uh, there's a video of a guy in like the early 1900s and he was around in this, during the Civil War, a really, really old man. And they asked him at the time, like, how do you feel about how technology has changed from when you were a kid till now? Because in their minds, like the automobile, wow, how crazy, you know, from back in when the Civil War. And he said, oh, it's the same. It's all the same. You know, people were happy. People are happy then. People are happy now. People had to get stuff. They're stressed then. They're stressed now. It was things like that. And, you know, I think about that. We look at the technology we have right now and act like everything's so great. But in 50 years, you know, maybe we will have hover packs and flying cars and teleportation or who knows what. We're not stressed out that we can't teleport right now. We're not sitting here being like, ah, I can't teleport. Life sucks. We just wear it. Maybe when you're in traffic on the freeway. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but what I mean is a dude... People who lived in the 1700s were satisfied with the level of technology they had. It was all they knew. And as things got better, people adapted to those better things. That's what the World Economic Forum sees. Mm -hmm. They see that people in 1850, they were happy. They didn't need air conditioning. Sure. Some like there was there was sadness. People would die of like you, you stubbed your toe and get an infection and die. But nowadays, people have become so spoiled and egotistical. And, and the example I'll give is healthcare. There are people saying healthcare is a human right. And my, my immediate logical, you know, rebuttal is if the technology doesn't exist to cure someone, is it your right? The mm -hmm. answer is no. But then if the technology gets invented and one cure is made because it was just invented, who has that right to it? Right. Technology. So this, this is the issue. The World Economic Forum sees that human beings can be happy with things being taken away from them. And that's their goal. Put everybody back down to the to the early 1900s, 1800s level of technology. They'll adapt to it. They'll adhere and they'll be happy. And then we'll sit atop Elysium with our flying cars. Yeah. While they continue to innovate, move forward and control. There's right. a level I mean, oh, of convenience you're mentioning where like they're replacing your locks on your door so that they can get access. Like it would be convenient if uh, someone slipped into my shower and washed my back for me and my armpits. <laughs> but right. I'm not into it. I don't need it. Thanks. No, don't need that level of convenience. Stay yeah, out. but it's like my house. if you look at these excerpts from books or whatever articles from 50, 100 years ago and they ask people, what do you think the technology is going to be like in 100 years? They do talk about flying cars and hover pads, but it goes to what you were saying that, you know, the elite are going to have that. The elite can have access to that, but it's not for the masses, right? The masses get the Bluetooth toaster and, <laughs> and, and the fridge that talks to you. It's like, why do I need a Bluetooth? Why do I need a fridge that talks to me? But people like it and the masses are sold on that. Yeah, man. So with, with all that uh, happening, let's jump to this story from TimCast.com. White House double da doubles down on Biden's semi-fascism claim about MAGA Republicans. <laughs> there, you know, this is, this is a, it's sad, it's pathetic that Biden said this, that uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, Jean-Pierre, how you pronounce it, reaffirmed it. Uh, but it is kind of worry worrying when the president is now starting to embrace the extremist rhetoric. Mm. It's one thing when he said he was going to be a great uniter and bring people together. And now he's continually doing the exact opposite. And it makes me worried about what he wants, what the what the establishment wants for this country. Was that was that in reference to the tweet that he put up or his his team, his handlers put up about pissing off moms? 
like the mega Republicans it. have pissed off the. No, moms he said they were semi embracing semi fascism. Okay, so this is a separate tweet, but it's that's like, oh, see, but here that, we go. Yeah, that's that's the thing, dude. It's like it's it's the continued gaslighting. You know, you almost get exhausted talking about it. It's like we know these people are the fascists. They're the ones that are pro-lockdown. They're the ones that are, you know, hailing the FBI, going after their political enemies. They're the ones that are literally calling to SWAT Marjorie Taylor Green, And we know why. And they why. did three times. Three times. And like, oh, there's a trans person's life. A trans person's life is in danger. Like, literally, we know why they're doing it. Because they want her to well, get well, shot. Well, what happened was... Is, is that what they claimed at her house? They said... They, the 911 call. Is it, and they said it was a trans person at her yes, house? Yes, the 911 call. Wow. But I think it's just like a deeper issue too, right? It's like this idea that your political opponent doesn't just disagree with you because they disagree with you and the, and the things that they disagree with you on makes them an evil person. It makes them reprehensible. It makes them that we can't be part of the same country. And, and you saw this with, with Kathy Hochul in New York too recently where she was telling her constituents that voted red or voted for the right, the Republican, get on an airplane, get on a bus and go down to Florida where you belong mm -hmm. because you're not a New Yorker. And so yeah. it's like it's like this winner take all kind of mindset in politics that if we win, then everybody else that voted against us is a terrible human being. And I don't want to share a country with you. Right. It's not just you voted different because you may live in upstate New York and you're a farmer and you have different prerogatives and different uh, you know things that you care about. It's you're an evil person. Yep. What is semi fascism? Yeah, you know, I, know. I think it is. I think if, if like, what I, does that even mean? It means if he came out and said fascist, he'd have nowhere to go. Mm. So he needs to be able to one up it. So now in 2023, 24 when election season, he's going to be like, they've gone to full fascism now. Yeah, oh. but that was tw that was 2016 to 2020. <laughs> yeah. But now he's talking about the regular people. He, it's, it's like they're, they're trying to find a way to, to, to go away from Trump and then take whatever the anger they had towards Trump and apply it to everyone. Well, they already did this with the, um, you know, the moms and the school boards, mm -hmm. right? It was like Merrick Garland calling these these school moms, uh, you know, domestic terrorists. You, yeah, you know, I, I guess I could see that. I, I, I see the escalation there because like 2016 to 2020 was like Trump's a fascist, refused fascism, Antifa calling out saying that, you know, this is the second coming of Adolf Hitler referring to Trump. But that was like the rhetoric of the extremists on the left, like on the ground. Right. Because I hear that. I'm like, that's nothing new. But I guess now hearing it like officially from like the top Democrat <laughs> I think in the White House is is the rhetoric goes from Antifa, Black Lives Matter, these psychos on the left. I think that's a testament to who's really behind him right now, I, which I, is it's not a surprise. Right. It's very disturbing. Like this use of the term fascist is kind of insane because what do you what do you call fascism? Corporate government collusion. I mean, that's like Mussolini's fascism when the state and corporations come together for the right. greater empowerment of the state. We've got the FBI is working with Facebook, with all the social media companies. We've got slave labor in China where we're getting our clothing from. Like it's the system is fascist. We're built on a fascist system. We're all semi fascist because we're participating in it. So. You know, but there are end people, of story, quit blaming people for it. Well, there are people who oppose it, and then Biden is actively in it while but accusing you of doing I'd it. I'd like to know what their opposition really entails, because speaking out against it, but then still doing it is not an opposition. It's it's faux. It's, it's you know, if anything, it's hypocritical. Yeah, but it's only fascism, like, technically to them, if it's coming directly from the government. Like, they're, they're circumnavigating that by, you know, even with the, the Zuckerberg thing. Like if I, the, I disagree. Like, the, the, they're cheering on the feds. Oh. It's it's only fascism if it opposes them, mm. and it could like literally anything. That, you could be a, a kid selling candy bars and then be like, "You're dumb," and they'll be like, "Fascist." Yeah, I'm you, interested. You, you've got the, the FBI raiding the former president's home, unprecedented. You've got COVID lockdowns, and they're oh, still yeah. calling you the dude who's like, "Can I cut someone's hair? I'm a barber." No, <laughs> you're a fascist. It's like DeSantis what? too. That's what, like dude? Uh, Charlie Crist is. Going with that narrative, DeSantis is a fascist. Well, Charlie Chris called him a dictator. And you see that? Yeah. He called him a dictator a couple of days ago. And he was like, uh, DeSantis was like, dude, I was lifting the measures. I was trying to let people Trump live wasn't, their lives. Trump wasn't calling out the military during the riots, which many people thought he should have. I think he should have. The day yeah. two, I thought he should have. Yeah. I actually told you that day two. is like, this is going to get out of control. I, you don't I, put the National Guard in there right now. There are still too many people who think they can convince fascists that they're not fascists. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. like, you call me a fascist, but but I'm not. I swear. Bro, the half these people, they know full well you're not a fascist. You're not going to convince them. Donald Trump trying to win over the mainstream media is just laughably dumb. Like he's giving them interviews. He's giving, And then what do they do every single time? They lie about him. They smear him. And he keeps doing it. Yeah, it kind of like goes backwards on his initial like fake news, 
you know, swipes 2015 and on. But you know what's interesting about, about this claim? You know, semi-fascism, you know, according to the White House, claim about mega Republicans. I just love how these people wrap everyone in this title. What does that mean? You what know, is a mega the black, Republican? the blacks, right? The black mega Republicans, the brown mega Republicans, all the minorities get wrapped in one. Like the, it, it's just so mind blowing that these are the same people that are like, oh, we're anti-racist and we're going to defeat white supremacy. We're going to defeat systemic racism. But you know what? Let's just wrap all of you in one little freaking box and put you in one little fascist box. You're the enemies, you mega black you're the enemy, you mega brown. That's the rhetoric of these people. Yeah. And like, I, I just, I, people need to wake up because it's like, dude, stop believing that the, it, it's literally like an agenda. Like people need to understand it is a political tactic to prop themselves up as the saviors of these races. I, people I, need to know that. I think a large component of it is rooted in nothing. It is, it is literally nothing. When you have a prominent individuals who have their roots in nothing, they'll say anything. And so they end up making making videos where they'll say anything for the sake of adhering to the cult. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. like on this show, for instance, um, oh, oh, I think it was Nina Turner. She tweeted out that credit scores were created in 1989 and they to keep people, poor people poor, and it should be abolished. And I said, agreed. I think the credit scoring system is BS okay. and should be gotten rid of. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You want you want to give a loan to somebody? There shouldn't be a credit scoring system where we have no accountability to how they how they do it. I've I have had instances where com companies will put a derogatory mark on my credit and I can't do anything about it. Screw that. And they're and they're BS. Yeah. She's right. And she's a, a fringe like she's a very lefty. We've we've criticized her heavily, but I'll I'll, I'll shout her out for being right. But there are many of these political commentators you'll see on the left will never do that. In fact, my favorite example, when we did a segment on conservatives being more attractive than liberals, because science shows it, the Young Turks insulted me, called me ugly, and then went, but he's right. What was, the, oh, yeah. what was the point of that? I don't think being conservative like doesn't kid, make dude. you more attractive. It's that attractive people tend towards conservatism Correct. because they're happy with the status quo because they're getting things given exactly. to them. Exactly. And that was what we were saying. It's it's it's, it's the idea of privilege. Well, because that, these people claimed that like working out and being healthy is like a symbol of white supremacy. That's true too, yeah. Now they're, now they're upset about it that people have privilege or whatever. You know, exactly. what but, really bothers me about this is this divide and conquer mentality of like the, the MAGA Republicans being evil is like it's what Mao's communist uprising did in China is they had the red class class and the black class and it was like if you were a communist in the party you were red and if you were you know not then you were part of this black class and the other kids at the school would know mm -hmm. and they would make fun of the kids whose parents were in the black and so they had to like the way to get entrance into the red class which was the okay one is you'd have to turn someone in or turn your parents this is what in. they're doing it's a cult uh, this is it, it feels like that it's a divide and conquer it's and it's cult. really low I mean, either low intelligence strategy or or it's insidious and it's on purpose i can't me, i can't figure it out i just want i just want to shout out one of the funniest things i've seen in a long time was hassan piker <laughs> doing doing a, a video review of a song we released two years ago will of the people where he was saying it was wrong and it was like he, he called it awesome but i don't know if he was saying that was like ironic or whatever but he was criticizing it saying it was just not good and stuff like that and the comments were people saying i actually liked that song i have it in my playlist Oh no, I didn't realize that was Tim Pool. Mm. And that's the funny thing about it. You like the song, the song is good, the message is good, and then you found out it was from me, and then you got mad and didn't like it. That's a cult. No, they got cult. mad and they still liked it. Maybe, the but they have to part. tell it. So is it this is a thing, right? Nickelback, for instance, a great example of this. If 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 look, man, I just gotta say, the, one day someone held up a sign that said Rahm Emanuel likes Nickelback. And then all of a sudden Nickelback became banned non grata. I was like, if you like Nickelback, you're not fun. You're not cool. You're a loser, even though they have multiple top 10 hits. As I have to say, not my jam, but clearly people like it if they were number one for four weeks straight, which is kind of crazy. It's like a, that's a feat to perform. But all of these leftists are like, Nickelback is dumb. Nickelback is dumb because all they know how to do is parrot each other and say what is acceptable. A good example, when I was at the battle for Berkeley, not, not, not the battle, a, a battle for Berkeley. There were many of them. Mm -hmm. And I was staying on the street with my, my, my GoPro and my gimbal. And I was filming. Some woman walked up to me and started talking about all of this stuff. And then I asked her, a woman got knocked down to the ground and, and had her head cracked open. Did she Jeez. deserve that? And she said, well, she shouldn't have been supporting Trump. And I said, so you think because she supported Trump, it was okay for people to just go and attack her? She's like, yes. And then I was like, so if like a woman was wearing skimpy clothes and walked into a bunch of men and they attacked her, it'd be her fault? And she goes, yeah. 
And then I was like, okay. Then a few minutes, like she, she like we, we leave, like we, she walks away, we wrap up. She walks back over and she's like, delete it, delete it. <laughs> she said things that weren't approved by the mob. I blurred her face. I don't have any interest in, you know, getting her life destroyed. But it was clear that when you try to interview many of these people, they don't do it. And this is exactly why. The, the, the exact reason why the left will not come out onto this show, but conservatives will do it all day and night is because conservatives are individualists who have their own ideas and the left are in a cult and they don't know what's approved and what's not. I feel like that even goes toward like to what Joe Rogan was saying in his endorsement of Republicans. It's like I you might lean left or be more independent, but you know these people that are going like all or nothing. It's like I I might lean that way, but to call everybody a MAGA Republican who you disagree with is just evil, and and I can't support that. What is MAGA Republican anyways? Are these the people that voted that think Trump won the election and they voted for Trump? Well, is this a new term, like in this context, at least? Are they getting away from Trump supporter? No, I think MAGA Republican just refers to the the new right. Mm. Like yeah. it, and, that's and, a problem. That's too the MTG Matt Gates. There are cultists. Figure. There are people that are like Trump's my president. I love Trump. Like those people, you know, cultism in general is pretty bad. You don't really want to be fall into a cult right. of any kind. But yeah. you know, just because you voted for Donald Trump or you have questions about the election doesn't make you like. A cult doesn't make you a cult. Right, right I mean, now. You have to vote for somebody if you're going to vote. Right mm-hmm. now, the minor Republicans are split between Trump and DeSantis. Mm-hmm. On the left, they all marched in lockstep behind Joe Biden and still post insane defenses of him. Granted, I understand the leftists don't like Joe Biden, but they all made videos talking about why you had to vote for him, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Joe Biden was establishment. Donald Trump was anti-establishment. If you claim to be a revolutionary who supported the establishment, for what reason? The argument for... Uh, if you were a leftist who wanted a revolution, Trump was your guy. He was destroying everything, wasn't he? He was going to fire the bureaucratic state and purge the civil servants. For what good reason would you defend the establishment unless you're lying and you're a reactionary fascist who wants to turn the clock, the clock back to the 1950s and create racial segregation? As one example. But it's like, it's CNN like told him so. It's like their superpower, though, right? Like they, you know, we split our, our support among these candidates. They hate the right or they hate Trump more than we love, you know, one, one like group or, I, or our ideologies or our freedoms. Or like, isn't that like a superpower that they have? I think they genuinely hate black and brown people. Um, I mean, even my run in with Katie Hobbs on Saturday, like I, I typically don't do content like that, but it just was so necessary because people need to understand she's running for governor of Arizona as a Democrat, right? She's literally a convicted racist, like two times. She discriminated against black people. So I go to this Arizona put on by the Arizona Democrat Party her little event where she's speaking she's pointing the finger at Republicans Republicans are this Republicans are that and here I am as a brown guy just standing up and asking her a question hey well what about you Katie why don't you explain to the people about you being a convicted racist because you literally discriminated against black people and who are the ones that got up and immediately literally put hands on me and escorted me escorted me physically out of the building they deported me it was the woke whites the woke whites are the ones who immediately go after me put hands on me and i'm like are you guys really doing this right now like the 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 democrats of arizona are deporting a person of color they're deporting a latino because i'm calling out katie hobbs racist record yeah what what did she do exactly so during her a little administration when she was, you know, in, in office, I think a senator, I believe, she literally, um, a, a black woman was working for her, Miss Adams, and she discovered that her white colleagues were making more money than she was. Hmm. So she came out and called it out and asked some questions and said, why? Okay. And apparently she went on a paid leave or a paid vacation that was already scheduled. And during that vacation, she was fired, let huh. go. Wow. So she clapped back, sued them, and she won. Okay, this is just one of them. She won. I think it was like $3 million, but it was capped at three hundred k or something, right? So Katie Hobbs is a convicted discrimination discriminator against black people. Okay, so the reason why I bring this up is like if Katie Hobbs was a Republican, this would be headline news everywhere. If Katie Hobbs had an R next to her name, mm. I would have done the same thing, same scenario— and I would have been hailed a champion, and I probably would have been invited on CNN to come out and talk about it tonight. Mm-hmm. The point I'm trying to make is, I, I, I make these points, because we all get this. I know, Tim, this is just like simple, basic stuff. But I know there are people out there that, that do not e- even understand how this simulation works. How is it that I can't do that? 
as a brown man that these people claim they champion and we don't want to deport Hispanics. But the moment I come out and I call out a legitimate, a legitimate case of racism, but because she has a D next to her name, she gets a pass and the brown guy gets deported because they're the real racist. I just it's make this point to say it's a cult. These people do not care about us. Mm -hmm. They do not care about brown people. They do not care about black people. They only care about their power and how they're perceived in the moment. And if they can get you in the cult. Yep. Bend the knee. That's the culture they want to build. I had a guy message me uh, over the weekend. He said that the reason he hates me, he posted a comment, is because I'm shattering consensus reality. And I was like, wow. Like, just come out and admit it. Like, you're aware that you're in a cult and you're mad that I'm waking people up. Is that it? So it wasn't that you said anything that was, nope. you know, factually wrong. It was that no. you were breaking, what do they call it, consensus reality? They, you, In order to keep people trapped, you have to lie, mm. keep them in the dark, and don't let them see the light. And that's why people like Brian Stelter, he was like, don't go and watch Fox News. That's propaganda. Fear. fear. Yeah, if you went and watched, fear. watched Tucker Carlson, for instance, you might be like, he's kind of a dick. But he's right. Mm. Like he he says, here's a thing, and then you're like, let me check the thing, and you're like, oh, the thing is true. He kind of delivers it in a snarky way sometimes. A lot of people like it. You know, he's a big show. Some people might not like it, but he's not wrong. He's wrong sometimes. Everybody is, but that's 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 the issue. They don't want you being able to see any of that stuff. Yeah, I think it's the metaphor I keep feeling is like if there's a governor of a city that's about to be invaded, the governor tells everyone, hey, everything's going to be fine. Make sure everyone wakes up. There's no fear of anything. All that thing you heard about invasion is just it's just rumors. And then when the city is invaded, the people are still there. They defend the city. They win. As opposed to a governor that's like, hey, everyone, we're going to be invaded. And everyone freaks out and flees the city. Then when the city's invaded, it's conquered. So they think that their lying is justified because it's keeping people calm. And that maybe when we transfer to this new world order, that the Americans' stability will remain because we didn't panic. It's, but you they got to see that the lying is causing people to panic. I'm sorry to interrupt uh, you. Let, no, let, it's always fear. It's always like everything. That's why everything's a phobia. Phobia is attached to everything. Transphobia, homophobia. Uh, if it's not that, it's some kind of virus that's going to come and kill everyone. But what about the virus? No, we don't need to know. It's the same thing Jim Jones did, right? The Jonestown cult, right? I was listening to this, uh, some, some audio books on the way in, and, and I was just like kind of making the parallels. Like this, Jim Jones operated through fear. It was pure fear. He Like in the, in the Jonestown cult, like every night, they would have like the white nights where every single night, he would psychologically prepare them to die and to suicide themselves for him every single night. Like he, he would come out, hey, tonight's the night. Tonight's the night we're going to do it. He would push it entirely. And he was psychologically engineering them through fear every single night, every single, oh, but no, no, this was just a test until finally that night came where they all were willing and ready to suicide themselves because it was literally fear. He can accomplish that power through fear. They do the I same go, thing. I want to go back to uh, the same some of the thing. horrors. I want to go they back to something that to. Ian was, we, 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 you know, that Ian made a point, and I want to bring the story up. It's from the New York Post. Abercrombie oh, deletes yeah. ad after tweet storm over normalizing obesity. I saw this, this image, and uh, you know, I want to start out by saying, I'm not trying to be mean to this woman. I don't know who she is, but I want to say one thing. Will, will the New York Post not let us actually get the image in there? Uh, she needs help. Mm. She needs serious help. And I'm not saying to be mean. I'm not trying to be, be disrespectful. This woman, her life is in danger. Yeah. Her pants are being used as a hammock for her stomach. I am not trying to be mean or disrespectful. This is no way intended to do that. It's to make a point. I'm sure she's a nice person, but she is suffering from morbid or moribund obesity. It, it's, it's, it's a large uh, principal cause of cancer, precursor to cancer. Your heart will fail. You will die. People are making this into a, a, a job. They're rewarding it. And when I see this, it's just one component of what I see as you call it cultural decay in the United States. I'm going to call it outright societal collapse. Mm. If we normalize morbid and moribund obesity, in how many generations do we have one, two, when our population is collapsing and unable to sustain itself? So Abercrombie I would say, in, in, in a case for optimism, deleted the ad. But there was that famous story in London, it was in the UK, I think it was, where they had this ad as Beach Body Ready. Do you guys remember this? Mm, and it was yeah, a thin yeah. woman in a bikini, yeah. and then all of these fat activists got angry and said it was fat phobic or shaming, so they replaced it with like a similar ad of morbidly and moribundly obese women. I'm just saying, when I see this stuff, you talk about the cult, fat phobia and, and all these other phobias, 
it is leading in one direction and it is societal collapse. And I'm not talking about, oh, no, you know, if, if two men get married, societal will collapse. No, I'm totally fine with gay marriage. That's that's fine. Actually, I think marriage is a good institution. And they're, you know, I'm sure the conservatives have their arguments against it or whatever, but I don't think that will destroy society. What I think will destroy society is when outside of that, you tolerate the targeting of children. Outside of that, you actually tell people that they can be more abundantly obese and it is marketable and we will pay you to do it. And it's like when your society starts telling you that it's falling down. But that's like real compassion, right? Like you're looking at this woman and saying, you're not living a good quality of life. I want something better for you. And I think it ties into this, this bigger idea in our society of like tolerance, right? If, if you don't tolerate everything, then you're bigoted or you're hateful. But it's like, no, I, I actually have my ideas that are rooted in something. And, you know, British journalist uh, Douglas Murray talks about this. He calls this a year zero that today, you know, we think that we are smarter and we know more than everybody that came before us. Mm. And none of your ideas are rooted in anything. And that's dangerous because if it's not rooted in anything, then the people that come after you can also uproot whatever you've just built. And so it's, it's not compassionate to have to, to glorify this. Right. It's not compassionate to let a 10 year old decide what gender they are. Because we have things that we look to our past and say, well, this isn't right. Well, we need to fix this. But, but we're being sold on this fake idea of tolerance, this, this fake idea of compassion. And it's leading our, our society to complete decay. It's evil. It is, 100%. It, is, it, is, it is evil, in my opinion, mm. to go to someone. Like, I make the joke when I, we, we got these cookies. They're Oreo cookies with birthday cake filling, dipped in fudge, covered in sprinkles yeah. with a sugar printed image that says step on snack and That's find out lot. on top <laughs> and the joke is when i hand it to people i say it's evil to do this it is because these things are extremely bad for you but the reality is like in saying that we you're, it's, a, it's a warning basically like i always tell people like dude one cookie is 130 calories and like 18 to 20 carbs so and addictive and it's and addictive but here you have people who they go to these people and they tell them Eat a pint of Ben and Jerry's all to yourself. It's fine. You should be. You shouldn't be ashamed of who you are. That's like giving someone poison and and addict and uh, trying to addict them to something, and then like you're not helping them. Like I'm sure opiates feel good. We aren't happy that doctors are overprescribing them. You are not helping someone by getting them addicted to these drugs. I feel the same way about so much in this in the society. The reality is, hard work is a better gift. This is the challenge. Mm. If your message is work hard work out and you will feel better than ever. But people are like in the short term, it sucks. It hurts. Then the other people come by and say, here's a glazed donut with a double cheeseburger, a Luther burger, and it will taste good right now. What they're not telling you is that you will suffer for this curse. And they're telling you they're the good guys doing it. We want people to roll up their sleeves and work hard and they will feel better. They will be happier. They will clear their minds. And that's, and that's, that's the hard message. So telling people, work hard, pay back your loans if you took a loan out, well, all, that's like, that's so mean. No, 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 free ride, free ride. Nothing good comes easy, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's all tied together. The tolerance, the convenience, right? All these people that they have Amazon, the big flat screen TV, smoking pot, eating their glazed donuts. Like, are they happy? They were told that they would be happy, but they're not. They're sad, they're empty, they're fat. And so, I mean, we have to pick out things in our society that we need to be intolerant of, right? Not, not in the sense that, we should hate people. Like, I don't hate her, like you just said. But we need to, to decide what is right, what makes us happy, what is actually good. Um, but, I, you know, it's this scare tactic that if you oppose anything, then you're bigoted, then you're hateful. Right? I'm not tolerant of murderers. I'm not tolerant of, of a parent, Drew, that, that take their kids to drag shows. Mm. And we need to be. We need to draw the line somewhere. Hey. And, and they're erasing every line everywhere. But it's 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 this idea, you know. So uh, I was driving in the car, and that song by Taylor Taylor Swift came out. What, came on. What is it called? Um, you, need, you need to calm down. Oh, Love T yeah. Swift. So T Swift. Yeah, the song is like it's a little bit about cancel culture, and the second verse is about homophobes and transphobes and all that stuff. And it's like it's it's this idea that people only criticize another a, a, a behavior because they hate a person is just wrong. But here's the funny thing. When I hear that and she's singing the song and she's like, you need to stop just talking about all the reasons you hate this person. And I'm like, you know, the conversations we have here with people who are concerned about like drag shows for children, they're not saying that it's just because they hate someone. They're not looking at the person and being like, oh, I just hate them. They're saying, hey, what are you doing to those kids? Mm -hmm. It's about an action and towards kids. 
for the most part, there, 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 I, I've, uh, I was at an, an event in the UK and there was a drag queen on stage or whatever. Wasn't going after kids. Nobody cared. I've been at Trump events where there have been transgender Trump supporters. Nobody cared. They don't hate them. They hate the actions when you target and do like a child and do something corrupt. In this instance, with the Abercrombie and Fitch, it's just a long line and a big story about getting people to gorge themselves until they're in serious jeopardy. That is not compassion. Well, this goes back to what I was saying is these people hate you, right? Like if, if I'm sitting here telling you it's okay to be unhealthy, keep being unhealthy. Mm. See how that goes for you. You should be as unhealthy as physically possible. That's not a statement of care. That's a statement of hate. That's the real hate, right? If I come out and say, you know what? It's fine. Mutilate the genitals of your children. That is going to go so well for them. That is going to make them so happy in the future, even though they have no idea why they're doing what they're doing. Keep doing that. It's going to go so well in the future. It's a statement well, of hate. That but, means you hate somebody. But, 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 These and people maybe, hate you. Maybe they, they, uh, they want there to be less people. Mm. But when I look at a lot of this, I look at a message that says, in the, what, what is the end result of all of the things they're saying from, you know, we're talking about the morbid obesity being normalized to the, um, you know, just the abortion at the point of birth. The end result of this, whether it's intentional or not, will be less people. Mm -hmm. Pain and suffering and death, and then people being unable to reproduce, and then people not having kids. So I look at that and I'm like, I'm not saying any, anyone who's pushing for fat acceptance or whatever is trying to reduce population. I'm saying the end result will be regardless right. of what you want, less people. That now, no China's not doing this. In fact, they're doing the opposite. They're not letting these messages persist on TikTok in China, but in the US they are. So what's going to happen? The US is crumbling. Mm. China is also having their own economic problems, but in, in the social ways, they're rejecting it. They're doing these ads like to, to promote masculinity and, th and stuff like that. Meanwhile, they're using their app in the US to push wokeness. You're talking about uh, yeah. what app exactly? TikTok. TikTok. That's ByteDance, the Chinese company. That yep. that. And spying on people. You talk about compassion. I'm thinking about like raising a kid and mm -hmm. a kid that like maybe the kid goes and steals something from the store and comes home. What's the compassionate thing to do? It's okay. Don't worry about it. Right. I love you anyway. That's not, I don't think that's compassion. It's that kid, you lose your privileges. You return that. You apologize. You cry about it. You feel horrible about it. You you feel, you know, you feel humiliated. Guilty, then yeah. you come home and you, you lose electricity in your bedroom now. We're shutting off the breaker. You're in your room. You cannot stay over your friend's house on the weekends. You have to be home at 5 p.m. every day until for three months. Like that's maybe hardcore, but that will teach the kid, don't steal, do not destroy right. society. That mm. I think is compassion. As horrible and as hard as it is to do that to a kid, like you're guiding these wild animals. Like what you don't, you know, is it compassionate to shear the sheep? Yet we do it anyway. I don't know. Actually, well, it is. The sheep like it. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll well, take you hear this. screaming when their legs are tied up. It's another another question. Well, you know, there's some things we do to farm animals they don't like. Yeah, you know, that's true. Well, I'll, I'll, make, I'll, I'll, I'll make like the, the religious okay, um, <laughs> the religious analogy or the Christian analogy of, you know, when God punishes you or when you sin. Um, and Drew, I don't know about you, but like, you know, we have a set of rules, right? We have a set of ideologies that, that we are rooted in. And you may disagree with the ideology or with religion. But when we sin, we're told you have to atone for these sins. You have to confess. And don't you always feel great when you confess and you say, I did this wrong. Let me, let me try to have some forgiveness. And that's like coming from God, right? And it's the same thing with kids. That you have somebody over you telling you this is right and this is wrong. And that's why I think maybe some of these people hate you, hate us. But I don't think everybody does. I think it really is rooted in a lack of ideas, right? They don't have roots in anything. And it's running amok. I mean, we're seeing it in real time. Well, because they've been convinced that liberalism, right? They've been, they've been convinced that liberalism means just all hands are off. You can't have a functioning society without any kind of rule of law because then you run into stuff like this. If we're just void of rule of law in a society, then the, 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 the sexualizing of kids is okay in a society like that. Because you can. Hey, Who the hell are you to say anything? You're a fascist. You're telling me that I can't touch your kid? You're a fascist. That's where these people's minds are. There has to be some kind of moral code in society, or else the society cannot function. There is no more. Like the moral code is is been destroyed. And you know, with with the with the drag kid stuff, you know, people say, well, their parents they can decide what they want their kid to do. But wh why is it not okay for a parent to give their bottle, give their kid a bottle of Jack, and say, well, it's my kid. I can allow him to drink. 
Well, they say that's harmful to them. It's physically harmful and you cannot do that. That's a values. societal standard that we've set. It's, it's culture and so values. Why are we not allowed to set societal standards when it comes to morality, right? Like 50 years ago, if, if you taught the communist manifesto in school, you'd probably get fired as a teacher. But now you can teach kids about sexuality. You know, they have these transition closets. Why can, why are we not like, where is it going? Why is there it, well, no that, structure no, 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 at all? There, there, there is a rejection of that. There's been a rejection of that, but there is a very deep seated cult that is trying very, very hard to maintain these things. Yeah. It, the, 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 like wokeness in this country is not that prominent but they are influential because they've seated themselves in our institutions. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now is we, I, I hear it in every facet. There are, there's, there's police officers who are like, oh, I don't want to say too much because I'll lose my job. Mm -hmm. There are FBI agents who are like, if I speak out, I'll lose my job. And then what happens? The cult and the establishment get to do whatever they want because the people who know what's going on are too scared to speak up. And it's really frustrating. And that is a major black pill. Now, when you look at at least the elections over the past you know, few months, major white pill. When you take a look at Abercrombie pulling that ad, I'd say it's a white pill. Yeah. I'm feeling rather optimistic, but it is really frustrating every day when it's just like people are, are too scared to actually just say, nah. Yeah, after eh. 2001 and 9-11, um, the Patriot Act got signed, and I feel like it bred a, a generation of psychopaths. No offense if you were raised in this situation. You just don't know that what you, that your lack of understanding about the danger of the Patriot Act is. If you don't realize that the Patriot Act is a complete subversion of everything that the United States Constitution was meant to stand for, then you've, been, you've fallen for this lack of morality. And then I went through a phase where I was like, well, if we're doing evil around the world, if we're invading and conquering Iraq, for weapons of mass destruction that didn't actually exist, then how can I criticize the Chinese government for having people in camps? I don't have a moral authority to do that. So I actually went through a phase where I was like, I can't be a moral arbiter anymore because the United States is doing such evil things. But I realized like, just because the United States, just because the Patriot Act is evil, I, I think it's an evil act, uh, doesn't mean that we can't stand up for what's right when we know it's right, or if we believe it's right. We still have an opportunity. And it, we have a, a responsibility to do if we don't yeah. do it who's mm -hmm. no one will not only should you but you have to well i think i think this this is like the kyle rittenhouse situation right people are coming out you know the newsweek letters or the newsweek articles with richie coming out and saying that oh he's not a hero that's fine he could have his opinion that, that that's cool right but in that situation i think that was the perfect example of this because you had 2020 on full lockdowns you had these riots that were made mainstream and they were normalized Kenosha was on fire for three days straight. But mostly peaceful. Right, but mostly peaceful. <laughs> and the rioters were the ones that brought guns first on night one. I was there, right? Well, so let, let, let me pull the this, story. But this, let me, but, but this is the, this is, yeah, okay, go let, for let it. Me, let me pull the story so we can get some context up, into, uh, we have this from Newsweek. It's from uh, Richie McGinnis. He's a good friend of the show. It says, I was in Kenosha two years ago. Kyle Rittenhouse is not a hero. There's a lot to go through in his op-ed to understand his position. He says, before the shooting started, 11.36 p.m. on August 25th, 2020, I ran into Kyle Rittenhouse in front of a gas station and interviewed him for several minutes. He was a 17-year-old kid with a semi-automatic rifle, and he was playing cops surrounded by people who didn't want him there. Rittenhouse didn't see it that way. Quote, so people are getting injured, and our job is to protect this business. And part of my job is also to help people. He told me for the third night in a row, half of downtown Kenosha was ablaze. When there's somebody hurt, I'm running into harm's way. 13 minutes later, Rittenhouse standing feet for me would kill one man. A few minutes after that, he'd kill another. Then he'd maim a third. Interesting thing is, uh, well, actually, you know, uh, we, uh, unless we have to like read the whole piece, I'm not going to do it. Richie mentions that he was he remained neutral, kept his opinion to himself so that he could be a witness on the stand. And he and he pushed back when, you know, the, the defense uh, when the when the prosecutors tried claiming, you know, that Rittenhouse wasn't being threatened. He was like, you know, Rosenbaum said F you and then reached for the gun, things like that. Mm hmm. But he, 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 Richie, uh, uh, Drew, you were there and you read this article. So, like, you should give your position and give your and argument. I was in the trial, too. Like, I'm not going to uh, uh, attack Richie here, right? Richie mm -hmm. can have his own opinion. That's fine. That's cool. But I was there, too. Okay? I saw the same exact things. I watched Joseph Rosenbaum get shot. I was right behind Richie when he put Rosenbaum in the back of the ambulance. All that same trauma. They were hitting him? I witnessed it, too. Yes. I witnessed Jeez. it, too. All that same trauma. But the real question here is... Is Kyle Rittenhouse really the villain? And this goes back to the point I was trying to make, is what happens when law and order pulls back? Are you left to defend yourself? Are you left to defend your own community? Because that's what happened in Kenosha. I wasn't there on night two, and I wasn't just there on night three. 
I showed up night one. I blew up that story that went worldwide, the Kenosha riot. That was my footage. So when I speak on this, no one can talk about Kenosha without talking about the context of Kenosha, right? Jacob Blake got himself shot. They started throwing bricks at police officers' heads. I showed up on the scene that night. They were burning down Kenosha, period. It was not a protest. There were no protesters. And the rioters are the ones that showed up with guns and were pointing them at police officers. For three consecutive nights, they did this. They burnt down multiple car dealerships, okay? They were burning, committing arson, looting the whole nine yards. The police were being told to stand down. This is why the community in the area, if you guys remember, they were boarding up the windows and they were writing things like, hey, elderly people live here. The handicapped live here. You want to know why? Because that little community thought they were going to die because of these rioters. All right. There was an old man who got bashed over the head with a rock. Exactly. Mm. But th this is filmed on, when on you camera. talk about oh, when you talk about why Kyle Rittenhouse was in Kenosha, this you have to talk about this stage that led to people showing up. Oh, and banging this, on the table. Wait, so mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, don't bang. But, on the, table. but this, oh, sorry, this isn't my show. You're feeling this. Um, but but well, you, it goes you, to the microphone. Yeah, you have to talk about what. Why was he even in Kenosha? Right, and they always say, "Oh, he, he crossed state lines. He crossed, well, Antifa on night two after the first night of rioting were literally mobilizing from Portland and Seattle to cross state lines multiple. to go riot. So, multiple, multiple. I want, right? I want to, so I want to point something out here. This is this gets to the heart of the argument. This is an article from Richie, and he brings up something interesting. He says protesters kept trying to climb into the SUV. This is after Rosenbaum got shot. I couldn't see who was punching me, but the blows kept coming. I kicked someone trying furiously, crazily to grab onto the rear bumper as we raced to the hospital." When we finally got there, we stopped at the bottom of a ramp leading to the ER. I tried not to cry as we waited for the metal security door to open. It's going to be okay, bro, I told Rosenbaum. We're going to have a beer after this and laugh about it. It was hard to hear my voice over the sounds of Rosenbaum struggling to breathe and gargling blood instead. As we pulled into the hospital, I watched Gage, I watched Gage Grosskreutz limp through its doors. A police officer held his butchered arm. It was a mangled mass of flesh and bone, not fully amputated, but not quite an arm. I didn't know at the time, but Anthony Huber was lying dead on the pavement just outside the hospital. So here's what here's what I see here. I think Richie is affected emotionally by this. Yeah, and I was just going to say that. And from my perspective, having been someone who was not there, but who interviewed all of you guys and on more than one occasion, I hear a story and I've seen footage and I've heard a trial and I see a man, Rosenbaum, who threatened to kill a 17 year old kid yeah. more than once and then tried to make good on that by reaching for the weapon. The moment he reached for that weapon, he created the threat of deadly force against Kyle. Because if he got control of that of that muzzle and then started fighting Kyle, who knows what would have happened. A gunshot went off behind Kyle. Now all he knows is a guy is chasing me who threatened to kill me. Someone's shooting and I don't know where. And he turns around and what does he get? Rosenbaum tries to grab the gun. Richie's affected by that saying, we're going to have beers together. I get it. I've I've I, I've seen some horrifying stuff, not nearly that level, but I've seen people die. I've seen people be seriously injured. And I can certainly understand why Richie was looking at that and like on the verge of tears, be like, we're going to grab beers, bro. From an outside perspective, looking at this from a mathematical, a logical standpoint, that makes no sense. This is a guy who was trying to who was threatening to kill someone and attacked them. Why you would want to get beers with them as if they're the victim when they're <clears throat> the aggressor. I, I'm not happy that this happened to him. <clears throat> I'm not happy that Kyle was there. I think even Kyle said he probably wouldn't have gone, you know, in, in hindsight or something like that. I'm not happy that somebody lost their life, whoa, whoa. but I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm going to shed a tear over the guy who instigated violence, threatening to kill somebody. Mm. Like we, we, we have to recognize violence is wrong. It sucks. It's bad. And then we have to recognize Rosenbaum initiated it. He was the one who was doing the bad. And we were lucky that Kyle was able to defend himself. We were, it was unfortunate for everybody that it played out this way. Well, Joseph Rosenbaum said, shoot me N-word multiple times and was requesting to get shot. So he got his death wish. He got what he wanted because he was there committing crimes literally five minutes before that took place. Joseph Rosenbaum not only requested to be shot, okay, but he was committing arson right before they even got to that car dealership where that all took place so people understand it's like kyle was administering uh first aid on both sides he even admitted that under oath in the trial as well so like it's like you have to understand the the, the i always make this point these were not good people these were not good people these people were a threat to the community they always will be they always have been 
because they were rioting and committing mass violence for consecutive nights. Joseph Rosenbaum was not a good guy, and the guy was asking to be shot, saying the N word at a so called BLM protest. I don't feel sorry for that. And the no guy one cared. Nobody, nobody cared nobody that cares. he was doing it. To your point, Drew, I mean, I think maybe a better title of the article would be, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse isn't a hero, but they are not victims either. Mm -hmm. um, and the part of the article that I thought was really interesting and poses a lot of good questions was later on when, when Richie talks about Kyle Rittenhouse gaining national fame. Right. And being put up on stages and inhaled as a hero. Um, you know, like you said, Drew, the police were told to stand down. Should there be some sort of community action where people do go out and protect their businesses, protect their homes? Should it be an 18 year old with an AR-15, you know, with the police standing down? I don't know. Right. If there's no law and order, if there's no police presence, then is it in the hands of the citizens to take action? Should an 18 year old go out there? Some people would say yes, that 18 year olds should arm up and go out and protect their communities. It's an interesting question, and I don't have the answer well, to I, it. I think destroying someone's home is the, the, one of the worst crimes you could ever commit. Killing someone is probably the worst. Just breaking someone's body, destroying someone's body, probably the worst. Destroying someone's home is probably the next worst crime. Absolutely. And, uh, I would, death, like death penalty kind of stuff. Like if someone goes to a city and burns the city down, that's you've essentially destroyed. 100 million people like, I'm or over 10 here, million people. I'm, I'm over here all anti-death penalty and Ian's like, death penalty for rioting. <laughs> you cannot let people destroy yeah. people's homes. I mean, this goes back 100,000 years of, of torching villages and things. That's like the worst thing, yeah. almost the if worst you're thing killing you can people, do. And, Even and, if you're and, just destroying their homes and sending them off into no man's uh, land. Like, that's also horrific to do to a human. So I, I think that the, the problem, I, I'm, I'm anti-death penalty, and I think it's because the state can never definitively prove that you know they have the right person. There's a risk there of giving them the authority. But the idea of defending yourself from someone trying to burn down your home. Now, that's an, a more interesting question. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly certain that if you are in your house, almost every state, and someone is trying to set fire to it, you, you they are trying to use lethal force against you. So, and that would, that would justify the use of lethal force in kind. West Virginia especially. If you're in West Virginia and someone comes with a Molotov cocktail to throw at your house and they're about to throw it, you are justified yeah. in using lethal force to defend yourself. A lot of states have codified that destroying someone's home is one of the worst things you can do and that you can shoot on site if they step onto your property. A lot of states have those gun rights. Some yeah, well, states the, maybe are a little more lenient than well, that. Well, the article always also attacked Turning Point USA mm -hmm. for, you know, bringing Kyle on stage. And, you know, we, we really wanted to have like a celebration for him. That's what that was. And it's like, that's that's OK. You know, th this is th this is kind of like this falls under the category of the new right. Right. It's like we're, we're, no one's trying to make him a celebrity. It's like we we had a W. OK, we got a W with that because not only did he defend himself, not only did what he do, what he did was right to defend himself in that moment in the context yeah. of everything happening. But even the trial itself, with all of the defamation saying he shot black people, President Joe Biden coming out saying he's the po literally the poster boy of white supremacy. OK, the deep state and these powers went after him hard pure defamation okay that same playbook that gets put on everybody kyle won kyle won because god was on his side and he was acting in truth and righteousness the, the the point i'm trying to make is the reason why we wanted to celebrate that is because we have to at this point we have to how many l's like aren't people sick of just continually taking l's to these people continually letting the deep state win continually letting them just go after anyone that's a freedom lover or a patriot it's like every single time they get what they want we finally had hope where honestly i i thought kyle was probably going to be put away yeah the, the way things were going the way things always go these people always win they always win they always get a w so so you i'm sorry that we decided to celebrate our W for once in a while because righteousness won and justice won when Kyle was vindicated because what he did was not wrong. We are going to celebrate that. America, America is going to celebrate that because it was the little guy versus big brother. That's what that trial was. And the little guy won. America won. Justice won. And we will celebrate that and we will not be apologetic. The, 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 the culture war right struggles to organize properly yeah. consistently it's stuff like that because and someone comes out and criticizes like oh oh, oh far be it from us that we celebrate something look, like but, that because we have to look all good no no those days look, are over look those how over. look how long it took joe rogan to be like okay maybe you should vote republican exactly i mean for all the thing that that uh joe's talked about that he's criticized he still maintained that you know he's a liberal or whatever and we've not heard it 
until recently, he's like, okay, maybe you should vote Republican. Well, I think if you look back at everything Joe told me, you know, before, uh, uh, or, or not before the election, but I mean, even, even still before the election, if you look at the things he was talking about during the pandemic, you'd think he'd have come out sooner and been like, guys, you, you maybe should vote Republican. Like, is the, is the, is the issue with Joe, uh, for Joe, that he, he only just realized the mistakes were made, right? So he's talking to Aaron Rodgers and he says, mistakes were seriously made during the pandemic. Did Joe not know that during the pandemic? that he wouldn't come out hard and be like, guys, these lockdowns are wrong. You need to vote out these people who are doing it. And it is the Democrats overwhelmingly who are doing it. He didn't say that. It's now he's saying it and he's saying it with a laugh. Mm -hmm. And so I, I look at that and then I look at like, there's there's limited organizational power, but we're working really hard. Parallel economy. I'm, I, I've never been happier, right? Parallel economy, Dan Bongino founded it. It's financial transactions, censorship resistant. The cultural stuff the Daily Wire is doing. They're, they're making movies. They, you know, they brought Gina Carano on. They've got more projects in the works. What is a Woman was an amazing documentary. We've got us, we, we rumble, everything rumble is doing. Mm -hmm. But th that's the big challenge right now. The component that you have to compete with these institutions, the media apparatus is microscopic. It's, a, it's, it's, it's tiny. And so everything has to be done across the board to build out these industries, to build out a space that has money so that people can be hired, so that people can be like, you know, if someone gets fired from their job for speaking out, there's a place for them to go. If, you know, look, I'll, I'll tell you this, Taylor Silverman, the, the female skateboarder, we hired her and I'm excited because we're going to have her lead our, our skate projects. <clears throat> she was one of the first in the skateboarding industry to come out and be like, hey, this is not okay that biological males are competing against us. How am I supposed to make a living competing when I'm at this disadvantage for these reasons? And they attacked her relentlessly. And so I responded with, we're going to do our best to make sure that you're not left left hanging because you decided to do what was right. Mm -hmm. Too many people are like, if I stand up, no one has my back. How can that be? How can we, we, we cannot accept that. The Daily Wire brought on Gina Carano when they tried destroying her career. The Daily Wire has your back. Mm -hmm. They can't carry everyone. Mm -hmm. we've, we've hired and worked with a few people in similar situations. Pete, you know, Pete Parado, when the offspring fired him, I thought we got lucky. Pete's, a, Pete's such a, an amazing guy and he's such a, you know, he's been in all these different bands. We're lucky. And Taylor Silverman, I can't look at that and then be like, we're going to ignore you when you do the right thing. No, we got to we gotta make sure we're helping people in this regard. Otherwise, what happens is Kyle goes to jail. Yeah. If, if there was no support for him, if people didn't come out and, and now, you know, and I'll say this, when Richie w was criticizing Turning Point USA, I'm glad Turning Point brought him out. I'm glad they clap and cheer for him. This dude's not going to have a normal job ever again. What is Kyle Rittenhouse supposed to do with his life after being attacked and lied about to this degree? You think he can apply to be a theater at an AMC? They're going to be like, no way we're not going to hire you. So he needs to be able to live somehow. Mm -hmm. And them bringing him up and saying, talk to us is one way to help make that happen. I see it where it was not about it it, it. it it was not about like, cause you always see, you see this from, from, from the left always. Oh, the, the new star of the far right, Kyle Rittenhouse. It's like, it's, it's, it's not that that's not that. This is this is literally what Tim just said. It's coming alongside someone that literally almost got obliterated, literally obliterated. Okay, physically, possibly. God, God knows what Rosenbaum was going to do if he got a hold of his gun and took he it. Probably would have followed right? through okay. with his threat. So this is this assume. is coming alongside uh, of uh, of a kid who almost lost his life in many ways and showing him support, showing him support. That that's what it's about. Okay, it, like. Just to give you guys some 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 background stuff, okay? Kyle wants a normal life. It, he'll never have a normal life. He he didn't ask for this. He 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 just simply wants to live as normal as he possibly can. Okay? Like whenever I talk to him, he's just, you know, just, just like a, a normal teenage uh, young man growing up. And right now, we 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 don't want that. We 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 don't want some some huge, you know, famous career for this guy. We, we, we just came alongside of him because we saw someone that literally almost got obliterated and destroyed by the deep state. So we decided to show him support. I know Charlie Kirk agrees with that. I, I know everyone that was on that stage agrees with that because we saw exactly what happened to him and that's what we wanted. And also his family, his mom at the time, devastated. Imagine being a mother, seeing your child, like literally being put in that kind of position to lose his life entirely. Almost. I mean, he did the right thing. He did the right thing. But so we decided to come alongside and show them like, Hey, you're not alone. They want you to feel like you're alone. They want every single person watching this to feel like they're alone. And we're not going to do that anymore. 
I want to I want to jump to this next story from uh, TimCast.com. Senator Lindsey Graham says there will be riots in the streets if Trump is indicted. Oh boy. Senator Lindsey Graham was has warned there'll be riots in the street if Trump is indicted. The Republican South Carolina senator made the remarks during an appearance on Fox News' Sunday night in America over the weekend, echoing Trump's recent claim that America is now a lawless country. Graham said there is no law when it comes to taking down the former president. Quote, most Republicans, including, what do you say, including me as a typo in there, TimCast.com, believe when it comes to Trump, there is no law. It's all about getting him. And I'll say this. If there is a prosecution of Donald Trump for mishandling classified information and after the Clinton debacle, there will be riots in the streets. I completely disagree. I I 100% disagree. The right doesn't riot. No, we would never. I mean, there's been a few instances. I mean, January 6th, for instance, was pretty bad. But it's like, they just don't. Uh, I I remember I was at Trump Tower and there were people protesting it. And there was a guy who was, you know, was asking questions about what's going on. And they said he was, and then he was like, well, I'm a Trump supporter, but, you know, I don't know. And then I was like, why don't you guys come out and like voice your support? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Well, there you go. The end result of refusing to speak your mind is being obliterated from culture and from mainstream society. The, your, your inability to stand up and support the things you like or speak out in support of any, anything related to your values will be the end of your values. Yeah, well, they know this, right? Like, I mean, that, I think that was a big part in why Joe Biden won is that people didn't want riots again. I heard that from many of my friends, many of my liberal friends. They were like, yeah, I actually don't agree with what a lot of Joe says. I actually like Trump's fiscal policy or I like Trump for whatever reason, but I don't want riots. I don't want my city to burn down. You know, they lived in Chicago or they lived in Florida. They lived in these different cities around the country. People just didn't want the riots. Um, they were fed up with it. And I think the the media knowing this, the government, the people knowing this, is even maybe part in you know why they why they raided his home or why they take this this massive action against the president because they know they'll they'll get away with it. I, I'm so disappointed that he didn't send in the National Guard in night two, man. I, I'll talk about it over and over again when it comes up, but like what a failure of leadership to allow those riots to Absolutely. burn. Absolutely. I'm not a big fan of Lindsey Graham. I don't like his alcoholism. I think he's an alcohol personally. I think he's an alcoholic when I look in his eyes. What does that have to do with it? <laughs> but uh, well, okay. Pers- personal feelings aside, Lindsey, I don't know if you're an alcoholic or if you struggle with alcoholism. I'm sorry. I hope you can overcome that. But uh, you when know, you look, say look. if this happens, there will be riots. That's not a form of incitement, but it kind of sounds like you're telling people no. to go riot if it happens. So watch your tone. You know. Look. Secondly, he's not wrong about what he's saying about the the Biden crap. What so look, look, look. The Daily Wire recently hired a Disney executive and people started going ragging on him for it. And I'm just like, the CEO of this company goes to church on Sunday, guys. Yeah. The Disney guy now works for him. Why are you why are you ragging on the Daily Wire over this? Why are people saying you better explain this? Yeah, it's called winning. It's called taking over the industry and taking over the culture. That's that, that's a that's a problem, I think. You know, purity tests. It is what it is. But the left is so obedient to their cult. They have a major advantage over the culture war right and that the culture war right will will bicker. The left will devour each other, but the individualists on the right are more defined and willing to just say what I they want to say. I think what's happening is this left idea, this cultism is like a communist cultism kind of thing. And there's so much of the world is communist in China and in at least a lot of the Russian holdover states have communist threads throughout, whether or not they're overtly communist. So it's for the first time in human history is bleeding through the Internet into American culture. Like we didn't have the Internet before. It wasn't so pervasive and permeable. And so we're seeing this insane bubble of communist behavior. It's crazy. It's not American. It's not normal in the United States. It's very, they, they thought the FBI was went after this for like 60 years or something. 50 years they were trying to stop the communist overthrow. I don't know. Yeah, like turns out they were the communists. Communist, because yeah. it's like, it's more than just that. Like the Chinese culture, the CCP, it's not real communist. I mean, it's like an evolution, a new form of technocratic, mm-hmm. you know, oversight that's not just, but there are communist aspects to it. I think, I think... The, the solution to a lot of this stuff is ignore the tribes. I think the left is the cultier side, but the right has their issues, sure. But it's the exception, not the rule. I think the issue is just compete in the space. Fund and grow and, and assert yourself in these spaces, which is what we've been trying to do. It's why we've, we're, we're not launching overtly political stuff. So we're not we're not launching stuff to try and pander to Trump supporters or liberals or whatever. We're trying to make things that will be entertaining enough for regular people. Well, I think, you know, this is something that the left gets really right and they're really good at is they have their allies and they clearly define their enemies. 
and they let you know people in the Democratic Party, they'll slip up, they'll make a mistake, but they won't banish them, right? And the right will keep thinking that they're going to win brownie points for taking the high road, mm-hmm. right? The staffer says something that's a little bit uncouth, and then they banish them. They say, well, we're not racist. Well, we're not sexist. It's like they're already calling you that. Mm-hmm. You're not going to win brownie points for taking the high road. And again, this is what the left does really well. It's what, why I said earlier, it's their superpower. Their cult mentality is their superpower, is they can mess up. They can do actually racist things like Katie Hobbs, but do they bring that up? Do, do they call it her racism? No, because they know that Katie Hobbs is her, are, are their ally. They will, they will help her to get through that, and they, they don't care because they have their allies and they have their enemies, and the right needs to get this through their heads or they're gonna continue losing. Yeah, it's not a time for people to sit still mm-hmm. and just take whatever you the high road, to turn the other cheek, to look the other way. It's not the time to do that. It's a time to create stuff, to create phenomenal, addictive art that is so good. We're working on a video game, you know? I don't know, it, it's, it's really hard work. Uh, Andrew, our game, game designer, is doing an incredible job. It's real fun. Seamus is doing the animations and stuff. And uh, this is not, I guess the, I, 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 we haven't released a lot of information about the game. We've shown like clips of it and stuff. Man, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's relatively political, but it's not, the game itself is just a video game. Are we going to be uh, able to play as you, Tim, with little nope. uh, customizable well, actually, different color beanies? That'd be great. <laughs> no, but we, we, like, I think Ian's going to be in it, mm-hmm. actually. You got to pay 99 cents to get the skin? No, I don't know about DLC that. DLC action? I, yeah. think, <laughs> I think you're going to end up being a like a special action. character or something. Like you sell rocks or something. Oh, like that's that. a good idea. Yeah, I'll be the merchant. Hey, hey, man. Yeah, that's that, something the left also does really well. They're they're the creatives. They're making movies. They're making the art. But they're losing it, and now is the opportunity. That, that's why it's yes. like. Well, thanks to people like you, right? Putting out your your songs and you know driving traffic and like you said, rejecting the mainstream culture, rejecting the the mainstream media. And this it has great. been it has been one of the most stressful things ever doing all this work to launch music more so than like. I've been playing music since I, was, since I was like seven, but I didn't expect any of this stuff to start happening. Like a million views. I was just like, uh, okay. Like we, we left the show on Friday and like, oh, you're number one in alt rock on iTunes. And I was like, holy crap. Mm. And then the, the, these are the, the attacks we started getting have been unrelenting. You know, I'm going to stop using the term attack when it comes to verbal crap. I don't well, like okay. The, 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 uh, what's the, what's the word we're looking for then? Complaints, it's not, but it's not. They're not legitimate. Complaint. Just they're, why won't you call it an attack? Because it's, it's it's softening the term attack and then making street violence less uh, threatening. I don't, I, think. I, don't, I don't think so. Look, the People goal is to inflict. It's it's then it's harassment, I guess. If the goal is to inflict emotional harm, but what I see here is, you know, we 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 launched Pop Culture Crisis. So it's 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 growing really really well for a show that's only you know like half a year old, forty thousand subs, getting thousands of, of of views in their in their episodes. Uh, they, 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 Brett and Mary are just doing an amazing job and it's talking about pop culture. It's not political. And that's the point. It's like, we want to just meet people where they are and produce content for them and then create a sphere of influence. No hate. No one came after us over this. Tales from the Inverted World. We got actually some, you know, positive. It's true crime. But then we put out a song that just took off like crazy. And all of a sudden we have all of these left pundits just attacking us relentlessly. And I think it's because this is this is the move to make. Mm-hmm. The, the left took the arts over. They use the arts to influence children. They want the kids to grow up to be like them. Controlling movies, controlling superheroes, controlling TV shows. You can't turn on a show without getting some woke garbage message now. And that's what they're trying to instill in your kids. If they can't get them in the schools, they're going to get them on the TVs. And then parents who don't know better put their iPad in front of their kids and the kids now just listening to all the stuff. So what happens? When you get a Daily Wire producing movies, Daily Wire bought Hyperions, which was just a Hollywood movie. And they got really angry. There was that viral thread. This is exactly the point where they were like, I watched this movie and then I realized it was a Daily Wire movie. And I was like, oh, no, what, what was I promoting? I, and I deleted it. Remember that? What were they shouting out? I forget. But I remember this lady wrote this ridiculous article about how she uh, actually enjoyed a Daily Wire movie. And she was really regretful because she had tweeted positive. Run, hide, fight. Right? Run, hide, Run, hide, fight. Was that, that, is that what it's called? Run, yeah, Hide, Fight? Yeah, that's the movie. So, yeah, yeah. so they, they tweeted that they watched Run, Hide, Fight, and it was really good, and they told people to watch it. And then people were like, that's the Daily Wire. And they went, oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ben Shapiro walked into our podcast conference. I tell you this. They're not scared of you doing a show and being like, politics, politics, because they know how to control you. They know how to say you're a fascist and then scare people away from talking to you. But when you make a movie that's really good that they like, oh, no. 
Now you're going to start influencing people. Now you're going to start winning friends and influencing people. And that's how they lose the culture war. It's mm. remarkable to me that the right is so resistant in many ways, not everybody, to making culture in order to win a culture war. Andrew Breitbart said this. What was, what was this now? Like 14 years ago that, that politics is downstream from culture. Every person on the right should be focused on art. Mm -hmm. Politics, of course. You know, Tom McDonald is probably one of the greatest musicians of our generation because he's, he's hitting powerful messages. He's, he's, he's speaking to tens of millions of people. And boy, are they pissed about it. This is what really grinds their gears and freaks them out. This is what, this is what wins. Not writing. When you're violent, they know how to control you. They know that normal people get scared of the violence. They can show that on TV screens all year and blame Donald Trump for it. But you know they can't do anything about? A song called FJB hitting number one. Mm. A song called Fake Woke hitting number one. The Daily Wire putting out eight political movies that Congress. people enjoy. Yeah. That is freaking them out. These people are pathetic, dude. Like, they're literally pathetic. I mean, I think they think that they're strong-minded. I think they think that they have some serious rooted values. But in reality, it's like you, you are so weak-minded that you have no idea... I mean, the Bible makes it clear that, you know, the fear of man is a snare. And what that means is you live your life afraid of the opinions of people, of what people think about you, of what people are saying about you. Oh, the mob over there is going to think I look like this if I listen to Tim Pool. I actually like this song. I'm not actually going to stop listening to Tim Pool because I found out that he's an alt-right whatever. I'm just going to do it in secret. Like, imagine being so pathetic, so pathetic that you can't be yourself. You can't be yourself out in the open. You can actually like what you actually like because it's so politically polarized. Ima imagine being so pathetic that you cannot stand your ground and just be yourself. You're an NPC. You're a robot. You're controlled. You're controlled by the mob. You don't have an opinion for yourself. You're told what to believe. You're told what to believe by pressure and through fear. There's you may so not even really people, believe though. it. You may not even really believe it, but you just know that, oh, someone on TikTok believed it and they got canceled. I don't ever want to be that. Well, case, you, case, case people in, like that are pathetic and they're losers. Well, this is this is the thing too. Like what we were saying about Nickelback. It's like, dude, you can rag on Nickelback all day and all day and night, fine, whatever. But like to deny objectively, they scored a four week streak at the number one spot. Like that means people like that stuff. You don't have to like it. That's fine. But to, to act like they, they're they not objectively successful is just weird cult-like behavior. It is a form of losing, too. Like, you call people losers, but it's like they lose their opportunity to be themselves, which is the most elevating NPC. and freeing experience on Earth. If you have a chance as a human to speak openly about what you believe and... Yeah, these, I mean, these people do need to be prayed for. They are NPCs. What you were saying exa is exactly right, Drew. But that revelation... Is so powerful because I think, you know, it's like if they're already calling me racist for just my beliefs that aren't controversial, if they're already calling me sexist, then then I'm just going to go pedal to the metal and go full throttle and take it back in any way I can. Um, because they're, like you said, they're NPCs, they're they're controlled by fear. And when you break that simulation, it, amazing things. So you give people bravery? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, these people are destroying everything. I mean, like, I mean, you look at She-Hulk. Have you seen watch? Have you watched She-Hulk yet? Yep. Right. Uh. It's it, it's just this attack on men, right? It, it needs to be combated with men coming out and just attacking it as a response, right? Because when when when, when I, you let this agenda come out and everyone gets demasculinized, everyone gets feminized, and, 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 and oh, everything's toxic because you're masculine. No, be more masculine. Come out I, and be I, aggressive and push yes, out Yes, 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 but look at Eric July, look at Ripaverse. Yeah. How much did he make uh, on I that? think it was like over three million. Three two? million, no, the Ripaverse. The Ripaverse? Yeah. And what, what PayPal froze his money? This is the scariest thing to the cult successful culture building mm -hmm. they, they they lose their minds over it they have to reject it they have to attack it and what do you how do they how, they can't stop it they can't and and that's i think you know when when she hulk comes out and it's and it's it's hilariously bad garbage or whatever it's like the lowest rated show that marvel's done yet it's just cr it's cringy i give it like a c minus I, I i watch it there's some funny bits in it but it is not it, it is what it is and if people like it i'm fine with them liking it miss marvel was way worse in my opinion that was like a magic school bus show, a PSA on partition in Pakistan or whatever. If you don't like it, let me ask you something. When you don't like, here we go, here we go. Drew, uh, name a song you don't like. Um, Friday? Friday. Rebecca Black. Yeah. Rebecca Black. Okay, that, that song was from 
12, year, 12 years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Is there a song from this week that you don't like that's like in the news? I don't, even, I don't know what's out right now. Ex exactly, because you don't focus on things you don't like. You focus on the things you do like. So for these people to come out and start attacking and criticizing the Daily Wire, the stuff we're doing, or, or you know anybody else, that's when you know you're having an impact. You're threatened. I, exactly. They, the real threat, it's not that people on, in cultists can't stop the, the art, the phenomenal art that's appearing. It's that they don't want to. That's the real threat in their minds. It's like a cognitive distance. Like, I like this. I don't want to stop this. I was told that I'm, not, I'm supposed to fear it, but it's good, and I feel better. And that's like this coming to terms with yourself or your, you know, that's, it's a, it's a phenomenal, it's a great thing to witness. I, I think the response to She-Hulk should be what Eric July is doing. Make, like Daily Wire should be working on adaptations of, of his stuff. They should be like, okay, how do we turn this into a big show? Because clearly the audience wants it. There's a market opportunity. And that's how you win a culture war by making culture. I'm so, I mean, look, dude, hearing that dude made over $3 million, oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a breath of fresh air. The more, the more people are start, start working on this stuff, the more people start producing and developing culture, that's, look, the elections are great, but, but politics is downstream from culture. You get a law in the books that your culture is unwilling to enforce, the law is meaningless. Even John Roberts didn't want to overturn Roe v. Wade because of where the culture was at. But then you end up with, you know, these three, these, these several other justices, these four other justices, and then it becomes, well, you got no choice now. That's Donald Trump getting them in. But look at what happens when you don't have the culture. They demonize Trump and they go after him relentlessly. You, you need, if, if every celebrity was, was, was more like, we, we have to support America, otherwise I'll lo we'll lose our jobs, this country would be doing well. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're like, you have to hate America, otherwise we lose our jobs. That is an inverse economic incentive that is destroying this country. Well, like that's the dangerous thing about censorship is that if you censor something enough, it, it's not gonna solve any problems. It's just gonna make that thing come back with, with a vengeance. It's gonna swing back even harder. Um, and I think that was, you know, Trump's whole ethos, right? That they were just suppressing the right to spread. And then he came back with this, with this, you know, he came back intensely. And I think it's the same thing with masculinity. If you suppress masculinity enough, it's going to come back even harder. You know, you see that with Andrew Tate. And regardless of all the things he says, it's like they're censoring masculinity. They're, they're you know, I'm an Eagle Scout. They, they kicked, uh, you know, they started lending women into to the Boy Scouts. And it's like masculinity came back even harder and even more toxic or whatever you want to call it. So I think this, this censorship stuff, it doesn't solve anything in the long term. Let's go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and share the show with your friends. We're going to have a members-only show coming up at TimCast.com, uncensored at about 11 p.m., so you don't want to miss that one. Go to TimCast.com, sign up. We're going to read some Super Chats. All right. Ready to Rumble says, I touch myself to your new song. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I touch myself to your song. I want you to love me yeah. when I come. You know, thank you. Thank you. Song. Thank you. Well, you got it, Tim. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. Like, part of me kind of wishes we had a subtle release of, of the song and the music we're doing. Um, we have to promote it. We promote everything. And this one just, we've promoted all of our projects. This one hit harder than anything else. And so there's been this unrelenting, unrelenting attack to tell us how much we suck and how we're awful and we should stop and we should stop. And then I'm just laughing, looking at like the trending and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know, man, I think we got one, you know, like it gets better. It's like we're inspiring each other that you do your best. And then the people around you get inspired by that and start to do better. And then you see that and then that makes you do better. And you kind of almost like are competing to do your best. Yeah, man. Misail Fraga says Republicans losing ground as midterms approach. Fact. It's uh -huh. true. It's true. Oh. Uh, the generic ballot was that Republicans were up by five points at one point, I think, right? In the aggregate or something like that. Fell down to like three, maybe, maybe it was 3.5. I think it might have been five. But now it's neck and neck. And so while that doesn't mean Democrats are going to win, Republicans are losing the polls. Biden's approval rating in aggregate is going up. And, I, and you know, when I tweet this stuff, people are like, yeah, well, that's because this, that. I'm like, dude, don't know, don't care. When I tweet out Biden's approval rating hits rock bottom in aggregate, people laugh and say, of course, because Americans hate him. When it's now up to 42, up like five points or whatever, people are like, well, that's because of this, that. It's like, no, no, no. it doesn't matter why it is. You like recognize that he's improving the polls and y'all got to get down. You got to get your messaging out there. And that means it's not just about going and knocking on doors. It's also about, we'll say it for the 500th time, building culture. Go play open mics. Go, go busk on the street. Go get involved. Set up community events. It's so important, man. 
Like if you live in an area, you should be going door to door and asking people to come to like a Saturday morning event of some sort. We've talked about doing what we called Saturday morning cartoons, where we invite families to bring their kids to hang out, have pancakes, sausage, jags, bacon, all that stuff and like a catered thing. And then we'll play cartoons that families like approve of. Stuff like, you know, when Chip Chilla comes out from Daily Wire, we, we'd show that kind of stuff, just regular old kids programming. And then people can come and meet their neighbors and build those communities. That's what this country needs. Anyway, Michael Holder says, totally unrelated, but it seems to me that the French Revolution caused the European nobility to begin pushing the anti-self-defense mindset that currently plagues the West. 200 years of this later, and you get Canada, Australia, Europe. Thoughts? Oh, Ian, you read out about that. What do you think? Oh, uh, wow. I was thinking about the French Revolution. Beaumarchais, you know, he he basically sold the French king out to win that American Revolution. Um, so you think that monarchies around the world now are are, are have have evolved to um, kind of inoculated themselves against the, like what happened in France? Basically, they're like, we need to make sure no one can defend themselves so they can never stop us again. But I think the American Revolution is probably a better example. I mean, they were trying to disarm the colonists first. And so the colonists were like, nah, you can't do that. And then, you know, fighting broke out, you know. Interesting philosophy. All right. Let's see what we got here. Smothers235 says, your song is not that good. Get over it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. I don't know. We wrote a song. Carter produced and engineered it and we published it. I like it's it's you, you can't gauge your own song. Uh, honestly, like my favorite band is Metric and my favorite song right now is All Comes Crashing. And I'm like, I wish I could write a song like that. But I don't know. Maybe people like the stuff we do write. Ashboro says, only ever wandered is the Joe Biden version. I'm calling <laughs> yes, on Seamus. We yes. need you on that one. All right. Daniel Vigil says, Tim, as much as you have been talking about Tom McDonald, we need him on the show. Break the Internet. Tom has an open invite to come on the show. That's um, right. You know, he's 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 whenever he can, whenever he's able to. I know he's a busy guy. I've talked to him, I think, a couple times. Now I'm a big fan. Uh, that would be absolutely incredible. And I think uh, we got to get him. And Zuby on at the same time. Yeah. That would be amazing. Also, I'd like to get Richie McGinnis and Jack Posobiec on at the same time. We're, we're working on it. Oh, good. Okay. I saw them going <laughs> at it on Twitter. You saw me tweet at him, right? I was like, come over. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I like that. All right. Roy, Rory F says, Tim, if there's an arrest because of the Mar-a-Lago raid, please have on Cash and Myron Gaines. Maybe Rakeda too, if not Andrew from Legal Mindset. Um, I'd like to have Cash back on and talk about the Mar-a-Lago raid now. Yeah, I'd love to. Anytime he's free. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, GCPR says, have Tom McDonald on the show. I mean, dude, Tom McDonald should uh, come on the show. He should, yes. Here's, here's what I was saying in an earlier segment. If every single person who watched this show, just one episode, went to downloaded iTunes. I know you, don't, you nobody likes Apple. Like, I get it. I get it. And then bought Fake Woke by Tom McDonald. In one week, he would appear at Billboard number one, and there was there's nothing they can do to stop it. Mm -hmm. And then they can all pretend, but something like that's the kind of thing that changes changes hearts and minds because you're gonna get regular people being like, "What's this number one song? I want to I want to know the number one song. I want to be on the number one song. I want to talk to my friends about what's popular." But people just need to actually support and buy the music and engage with the culture. Does do uh, does Apple have playlists that automatically play the top songs? Like, do you have the top ten playlist that just changes every? I don't know, but I know that a cool uh, feature. Yeah, I, I I don't know I don't know why, but I will say like we're not on iTunes features list at all, despite being huh. number two. Does it take a week or something to update? I don't know. I know that um, it it one there, there's a couple of things. It may be that you have to give them like a month in advance notice your song is coming out. Fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure John Rich, when he scored a Billboard Hot number 65 with Progress and was on the top number one slot for like a week and a half, he also wasn't promoted or featured. And that's what I'm talking about. John Rich of Big and Rich, you guys know this guy. He's, he's awesome. We've had him on the show. Yeah, he great. wrote a song criticizing the rioters and the, far, and the woke left and all that stuff. This is what makes them scared because people loved it. Hmm. Billboard Hot 100 number 65, a song that was criticizing woke people and wokeness. This is the stuff we need. Let's get some more Super Chats. Mark Shepcott says, in regards to not getting any coverage on the billboards, you should interview or talk to Tom McDonald. He has repeatedly outsold the competition and they refuse to accept his numbers. He has emails. I noticed this. I looked up and saw that Fake Woke hit number 96 on the Billboard Hot 100, but he had 5 million hits and he was the number one in digital sales. And I'm like, okay, that, that's BS. Mm. They're playing games, man. 
Yeah. So uh, I'd love to see, I like, it's this simple, man. If not me, if not the Daily Wire, if not anybody else, just anybody cracking through that system. When John Rich did it, it's exciting. When when Daily Wire launches movies, it's exciting. When they hire Disney executives, it's it's exciting. If every single person who listened to Tommy Town's music just spent a, a buck to buy that song one time, not only would you be supporting his music and his ability to do more, they would not be able to deny that he is a cultural force. And mm-hmm. then what happens is, let's 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 step outside of politics. If every person who was a fan of of heavy metal bought the songs, it would chart because people aren't buying as much music these days. It would chart. The major labels would look at the Hot 100 and be like, this makes more money. Start investing in metal and rock and putting that on the radio. So it's kind of like calling the radio station and requesting your song from like 30 years ago. That's what you would have done. And now it's you buy yeah. the song on iTunes. It is 69 cents more expensive, but that's just the way that you chart songs. The now. way, the way or, or people listen to it. Or any, any it doesn't so, have to yeah. be iTunes. It could be whatever service you buy it from. This is, this is the fear I have. Oh, what is it like? A th- 100 views, 100 listens equals one purchase. One sale. Something like that. It could be 150. Mm. But uh, nowadays, people buy a subscription, get access to all the music, and then the algorithm tells them what to listen to. So that's me. I put on, like, here's a genre I like, and the music automatically plays. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's just how 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 the machine churns out these days. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim... I, uh, why, yesterday, I spent over three hours driving through rural PA, knocked on 47 doors and got two folks registered. I'll take two for my first time. It's just the beginning, bro. Here, here. That's amazing. Scott Pressler is the king of re- voter registration, but voter registrations predict outcomes. People who register to vote are more likely to actually vote. So if y'all go out and knock on doors. That's really impressive, dude. That's, that's really amazing. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, I'll put it this way. If every single person who listened to this, listened to this show went and knocked on one door and said, "You registered to vote yet?" Okay, cool. Then you'd end up with a lot of people registering to, registering to vote, making a big difference. J five two three says, "Please have on Naomi Brockwell. She reports on tech surveillance and cybersecurity." Oh, we'll take a look. Check her out. All right. Notre Dame says the WEF is a cowboy conspiracy to go back to the eighteen hundreds. I mean, I got to be honest. You ever see a good Western when they're like on horseback chasing after the train? (laughs) It's a big cowboy. The only way to get it back, we must go back in time. That's right. Unless we literally go back in time. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, if we all do a little, we do a lot together. That's right. right. uh, Kames Ojeef, good name, says, Tim, please pronounce (laughs) Caringe Jean-Pierre's name correctly. She's our first black queer press secretary. It's Caringe? (laughs) No. I'm assuming it, she makes him cringe. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> mm, okay. I'm excited for that Project Veritas expose that's oh, coming yeah. out. What is it, tomorrow? Thing? Yeah, what's it, what's it about yeah. tomorrow? Exposing the secret, uh, secret curriculum? education curriculum. Ooh. It's going to be good. I'm wow. stoked about that. I think it's going to be good. Let's grab another super chat. Augusto Mimoche says, this message must be read in every newspaper. Heard on every radio, seen on every TV. I want everyone to remember why they need us. I love that movie. Okay. <laughs> Chancellor Sutler. Do you guys remember that? Do you guys watch Reef of Vendetta? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, never, never and then like, it. so the, the chancellor is like, I want them to remember why they need us. And so then all the media goes nuts <laughs> saying like quarantine break and f- famines and drought. And then people are watching the TV just believing all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's scary, man. It's really scary, yeah. too, when you can get someone in private away from the cult and they start to break free. That's the real thing. Like, get them away from it. Get them away from other people. Get them away from the social media. And you'll see them start to be like, yes, this sucks, you know, but they're trapped. Dr. Wolfstar says, Tim will never stop hiding in his own echo chamber and won't stop only listening to the sound of his own voice and opinions. Why are you so scared, Tim? Bro, I just read your what? super chat <laughs> criticizing me for, for being... Uh, I probably listen to more critics than I do people who actually like me, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You get a pod- positive criticism, too. Sometimes critics uh, critics will give you good, good yeah, criticism. Yeah, we've, got, we've gotten good a lot feedback. of good criticism mm-hmm. and harsh criticism, and we've taken it and we've adapted it on this show, you know, for sure. LOC135 says, Tim, I can't figure out how to use Apple Music to download your song. I'm an Android guy. I love the show, by the way. It's uh, iTunes is not Apple Music. And so that's why it's like really difficult. That's but, you know. Confusing. Yep. Don't like that. Apple Music is them trying to compete with Spotify. iTunes is an app that allows you to download songs and listen to podcasts. It's really weird because I think on the app, it's mostly just podcasts now and they're shifting a lot of it to Apple Music or something. 
I don't know, but like our podcasts on Apple Music. Oh, weird. I think you can get some. It's weird because this this podcast's biggest audience is iTunes. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I think the podcasts are on iTunes. I don't really use Apple Music. I use Spotify. I recently switched from Apple to Spotify. The only thing that like is exclusive to Apple that I really like is they uh, they post live sets, oh, which is really nice. Like Spotify, you can't find like live sets oh. from festivals or whatever. Oh, cool. Here's here's a good yeah. super chat from Dr. Wolfstar again. He says, Tim is a cult leader and lying to his audience. Oh my. But like the challenge, I suppose, is when I say something like, please watch other shows. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like that's the only thing I can really say. Like I get things wrong. So my best thing I, I would say is like, listen to Jimmy Dore. He's a leftist, but he's anti-establishment. Listen to Breaking Points with Crystal and Sager and listen to uh, Steven Crowder or whatever. Listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah, pretty sure cults do the opposite of that and tell you not to listen to other people and only stay here. Mm. Mm-hmm. But that's the only game you got, huh? Dr. Wolf stars to lie to people. Beanie but, man bad. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Ian Kinney says, Zuck, that, well, that's the other thing too. It's derangement. Some, someone mentioned to us the other day that it's not Trump derangement syndrome. It's conservative derangement syndrome. Yeah. And then I thought, I'm like, actually, it's just like opposition derangement syndrome yeah. mm-hmm. if you oppose the cult. Ian Kinney says, Zuckerberg flat out lied to Rogan. I got a seven day ban for sharing the New York Post's Hunter Biden article, which ultimately contributed to my permanent suspension from Facebook. Hey, you know, maybe we got to do a Zuckerberg top Facebook lawyer, Tim Pool, Joe Rogan yeah. episode, you know? Yeah, that'd be nice. Nah, yeah, nah. That'd be cool, you know, if I'm ever in Austin, you know, maybe hit up Joe or something. I think so. Mark kind of, when he was asked if they were censoring stuff, they were like, no, no, no. We have a company do that for us. I'm like, well, (laughs) what's the difference, bro? Yeah, that's the thing. I think Joe is not as much of a culture warrior. I I would actually say Michael Malice. Joe should have Malice with with Zuckerberg on. I think that's my, my, my advice to Joe Rogan is like, if you're ever going in up against like a big shot, and see if they're willing to have a sit down and include Michael Malice on it. Cause, cause that dude would do better than I would in terms of calling out, you know, Facebook and, and challenging them and having a good conversation about it. Bill Ottman would be a good. Oh yeah. To talk yeah. About open Joe, source. yo, Bill Ottman of minds sitting down with Mark Zuckerberg. That would be something. That would be something, man. That'd be unique. Yeah. A fiery, fiery yep. conversation. Mostly peaceful. Roberto Gonzalez says, that's a good name, Roberto. We got a Roberto over here, Roberto Jr. You're right, Tim. America has been falling apart for years now. And it all started after the 19th Amendment. We should reverse that and get our, get our country back on track. <laughs> I don't agree. It's Andrew Tate typing. Is that what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't think the issue is the 19th. I think the issue is media manipulation. But I do recognize that, uh, was it 70% of millennial women are Democrats? Yeah. So they're, you know, for whatever reason, they're, more, they're getting hit by More this. susceptible to media manipulation? Or being targeted specifically by it, you know? Both, yeah. we, well, we know from uh, Insta- like the, the, the data on depression that young girls are more likely to get depressed from Instagram than boys are. And it may have something to do with being more susceptible to social manipulation and pressures. Right. Well, we know that girls are much more susceptible to the trans, the whole trans things is what... Uh, more likely to be Irreparable trans. harm called that book that Abigail Schreier wrote. I can never remember what it's called, but she wrote about it being a well, the, agent. Well, there's a, a, a study from the Boston Children's Hospital showing that like the majority of surgeries was done on girls. Mm. All right, the woke whites have been taught to hate themselves, mm-hmm. especially the women. And it's mostly the women. Because yeah. if you come That's out what, and you speak out against a, you know, a trans man, you get canceled. You're not allowed to have a voice. The women... It's kind of like they dug themselves in this hole, you know? It's like, what do you, what do you expect? I don't feel sorry for you. Hmm. All right. Nichols and Lemon says, has Ian ever read Atlas Shrugged? I feel like a lot of the questions he asks are mirrored by situations in that book. No, I never have read the book. I, uh, I think read, I watched part of the movie. Read it. Yeah. yeah, The three-part movie that's like nine hours long. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Read the book. It's terrible. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just play Bioshock. I read. Yeah, close enough. I started that game. I read uh, 1984 and Animal Farm. Those are like the Those only two good. dystopian novels I've read so far. Not Fahrenheit 9/11 or not Fahrenheit 9/11. That's a read Fahrenheit. It's such a good book. Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trash Panda says Ian is on point tonight. Straight twenties, my dude. <laughs> Holler back, dog. It's funny though. Like whenever I talk to people, like I'll meet a fan and they'll be like, you know, it's really true. Like. Ian either does roll a one or a twenty. <laughs> That's great. Like, but you, the, you extremists. No, but you, you made, can roll a ten too. You know, you made that up, didn't you? Or no, no, someone. Well, I was it. explaining it on the show that a twenty in Dungeons and Dragons is a critical success, no matter what you're trying to do, because you throw twenty sided dice, and a one is a critical failure, no matter what you're trying to do. So it's funny for role playing. I'm trying to convince you to follow me, and I roll a one. It's like, yeah. I'm, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, whatever I want. Or I drop yeah. my sword on the ground and, I'm, and I stub my toe in the middle of it. 
So, so the, the, it's it's a meme now. People will type one or twenty in the chat depending on what Ian says because it's either, it's one or the other. It's like it's true. There's, there's like sometimes <laughs> people will sometimes put an eight or you know I'll see like a number like okay that one was actually somewhere. Dude, in the I middle, love when you know? I see like an actual like that's a seventeen. That's like an <laughs> accurate. <laughs> All right, 3QH, three-quarter size, says, congrats on the song, Tim. My band is interested in signing with Timcast Records. Contact me on all socials at Red Pill Fight Club. Okay, I will. Ooh, Red Pill me, Fight Club. Red Pill Fight Club. Fight Club. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Um, we gotta, we got to invest a lot in this, man. And uh, we're going to have to hire more people and expand Carter's operations so we can record and promote and produce and do marketing and stuff. And it's not easy, and making money off this stuff isn't 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 easy, especially when the industry does not like outsiders. No yeah. joke, they'll do everything they can to try and keep you out. But you know what? We're going to make music because, like, the making culture is the goal. So if we have, if if people become members at TimCast.com, part of what we do is with with our revenues invest it in these projects. And at the end of the day, it's a big marketing push for the for the brand if we have successful hits and stuff like that. So we're definitely looking to sign bands, and then maybe take some of the heat off uh, uh, off of you know me and expand into other areas for sure. I think that's one component of it too. Like with the other projects we've done, I haven't been in charge, like leading them. And this one was me singing. So they definitely came after me. Politicu says, or Politicus, there needs to be a MAGA constitution and everyone should sign it. That'd be interesting. What would be added to a MAGA constitution? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, An amendment saying like- Drone delivery. Let's- Wait, I don't know about that, but I think it would be like, you have borders. Yes, borders are good. Like a defined border must be defended, you know? An amendment to the Constitution. Crazy. Yeah. Repeal the Federal Reserve Act. I don't know how you would amend it. No central banks. Yeah, you need to decentralize um, command. What jail, else? Jail Hillary Clinton. That's, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the 30th <laughs> Amendment. That's right. <laughs> Jazan Heitman says, Wisconsinite here. State gun laws. You can open carry shotguns, rifles, and even pistols under 21. Under 21 can own open carry pistols, but not buy them. You can use deadly force to defend yourself if necessary. Statute 93948. Hmm. Well, interesting. Cam Girl Asuna says, I agree there need to be alternatives and resources for people to seek employment opportunities that are in line with their values. I'm tired of being forced to listen to diversity, inclusivity, and equi- uh, equity training and threatened when I say something. Any suggestions? Thanks. You know, the reality of life is if there's a problem, you must be the one to solve it. And I think a lot of people listen to us. I think the people in all this room are people who are like, I'm going to do something. Mm-hmm. That's why you guys report on stuff. That's why we do a show. And so you guys just have to figure out what you can do. I'll, I'll say this. Public Square. The Public Square app is one of the most powerful tools. Have you guys heard of this? Mm-hmm. You, you register your business. It basically, when you sign up, it asks you if you agree with these values. And it's like American values. Like the Constitution is good. Things like that. The family is good. You say, I agree with these things. Then they put a they they put your business on the map, and people can download the app Public Square, and then they can look for businesses that agree with American values. So you make sure you're giving your money to people who don't hate you. That's great. It's amazing. That's great. That's one solution. Go apply at jobs at those places. You know, not like it's going to be perfect, but hey, there you go. Start a company, or start your own company. Not we, not always so easy. We've you know? kind of yeah. kind of fallen down the hole into this culture of workers. Like everyone, people think they need to work for someone else, but you know, you can start your own company. Macho man Andy Savage says, Ian has won me over with those nat 20s he's been rolling tonight. Ian, I found you to be pedantic at times. Tonight you have been on point with a lot of what you said. Oh, thanks, dude. Ian's like, if you riot, death penalty. (laughs) And they're like, yes, Ian, you're so right. I was thinking about it in my room, like how destroying someone's home is one of the most abhorrent things you could do to a human, really. It's pretty bad, yeah. Ian's going to be sitting on the throne and they're going to be like, Sire, this man was protesting and throwing rocks <laughs> off with his head. <laughs> off with no, his head. Yes. No. That's a good impression. Powder PZ says Trump denied Alex Jones' request for him to denounce the vaccines. Alex said he can't support Trump unless he does. Mm. Interesting. Lessa H says Tom would come on your show in a heartbeat. I'll hit him up. I'll hit him up. We'll try and uh, we'll see if we can make something like that possible. You know, uh, Tom's a busy guy, man. Yeah. Like for us to get such a big, like, big musician, big celebrities doing, doing all these songs, I would be, I, it would be an honor and a, and a privilege, man. Mm. All right. Mr. Grizzly Bear says, hey, Tim, all the post-Civil War talk reminded me about a show called Revolution. In the show, the government creates a nano weapon that wipes out all, all electricity. It shows how a collapse might look. Interesting. Let's grab some more. Mm. Super Chats. Triton54 says it says a lot when a 17-year-old has to stand up and say the adults are back in charge. 
Those who say violence is never a solution have never been in a situation where it was the only solution. My response to that is violence in defense when you're being attacked, like Kyle Rittenhouse's situation. He didn't go out with a gun to try and hurt people. That's the lie they pushed. Mm -hmm. He was actually helping those people until that dude tried to kill him. So I understand, unfortunately, yeah, violence, sometimes war happens, conflict happens. Typically, it's the solution when someone aggresses upon you. But I wish we could get away from it somehow and, and, and stop it. But the reality is this. If this dude was attacking Kyle Rittenhouse, the only way to stop him is quite literally violence. And it's not an endorsement of it. But if the police intervened, what do you think they're going to do? Walk up to him and be like, excuse me, sir, would you kindly get on your knees and put your hands behind your back? And he'd be like, oh, sorry about that, sir. And then do it. It wouldn't happen. What do you think this is? Scotland? No, where do they do that? Ireland? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, that was Bioshock. Would, would you kindly put your hands behind your back? Yes. Yeah, yeah the, dude, the dude's going to be like, no. And then you see these, these viral videos where they're fighting cops. And I wish this wasn't the reality, my man. But, you know, life is just, it, these things happen. The, and we want to try to avoid them, but sometimes it happens. The age of Roman aggression was like, hey, we're tired of getting attacked from our borders. So now we need to go out and attack everyone else around us to take it over so that we no longer get attacked. That's when things start to get really crazy, where like violence is that was that a solution? I mean, it probably preserved the city of Rome. If they didn't do that, it probably would have been taken over. But look at how many people died and, and sent into slavery because of it. Don't uh, don't back a dog into a corner and then get mad when you get bit. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. All right. Defense should never be criticized or attacked. Patrick Reichert says, I want to let you know that your song Only Ever Wanted has been a big help as I cope with my dad's 30 day plus hospitalization as he fights for his life against cancer. Faith, family, and your song. Sorry to hear it, man, that uh, your dad's going through that. I hope everything turns out well, and I thank you for the shout out. And um, I, I hope, you know, it, it, it's a song, you know, but if it helps, it helps. Guy Rainey says, hey, Tim, congratulations on your original song and Tim Cast Records. Any chance of an album deal for Smokey Mike and the God King? Are you kidding? So those fun. are legends. <laughs> you know, I, I grew up listening to those guys. Some Changed of the, life, yeah, yeah, you know, my mom was always playing Smokey Mike and the God King. Huge inspiration oh, to yeah. us, by the way. <laughs> um, I won't say, I, I, I will say immediately the answer is, of course not. The Daily Wire, the, you know, that's, that's, that's like all theirs, all their stuff. I will say. Remember that. Remember that super chat. I'll just say that. Remember that super chat. Yeah, Smokey Mike and the God King, man. Next level. I mean, together. Uh, this is no joke. Uh, Jeremy Boring and Michael Knowles have a song under Smokey Mike and the God King called "Together Again," and it is legit, extremely good. I remember Bop. I heard it, and then I told Jeremy I was like, he's like, he's like, it was a, it was a gag, it was a joke we were doing, and I was like, bro, this song's really good. It's like a really good song, and he's like, oh, thank you, and I'm like. It's it okay. It's a joke, sure. It's a good song. It is a it, together again. If you haven't heard it, you should check it out because it's legit and it's funny too. They're like wearing band outfits and uh, like like marching band outfits, and then like Jeremy's playing the drums and they're singing. It on looks stage. like Knowles raided my closet. That's great. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's really good stuff. Really good stuff. All right, we'll grab some more super chats here. Uh, okay, I think I uh, Richie McGinnis. Is that is, did, is that Richie actually giving us a super chat? He didn't say anything. I don't know. Oh, there he goes. He says, couldn't pay 420, but get <laughs> Drew a, a dube so he grows his hair out. <laughs> Ian and I pick up on uh, pick up higher vibrations through follicles. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Yes, <laughs> let's go <Yes>. swimming. <laughs> Richie. You ever grow your hair out, Drew? Nah. That's Com okay. Coming soon. I am not a woman. There you go. Today. Maybe tomorrow. Today. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Right. Maybe tomorrow. Greg Desiatov says, we are slowly winning the culture war. Tim Cast and Crowder, even with censorship, have grown in subs, and yet the Young Turks have literally had no growth in the last 12 months. Well, I'll tell you this. You know, we were, during the 2020 election, this channel was growing like crazy numbers. And we've been, we've been consistently hitting over the, pa over the past year, like I think like 10,000 subs per, per month. It's, it's relatively low, in my opinion, if you look at some of these other channels, they've been growing a lot more. Mm -hmm. So we've been trying to use what we have to expand outward, because I'll, I'll put it this way. We should probably be, a, be trending on YouTube every night we do this show. Tim Cast is the 16th biggest live entertainment show in the world on YouTube, the 11th most super chatted show on YouTube, I'm sorry, in the country, wow. in the country. And you'd think that would be something on YouTube, but it's not. Why? Well, they're probably suppressing us. Mm -hmm. So here's the funny thing. We were with uh, uh, the song we put out, we were trending number 23 on YouTube. And I thought it was crazy because I'm like, we've had bigger podcasts than this. When we did the joke with the podcast with Joe Rogan and Alex Jones, we weren't trending. It's got 2.4 million views because I, my opinion is that they're suppressing it. Probably because mm -hmm. it's politics. 
politics. It's tough as an admin to to promote politics because if then it starts to seem like you have an agenda. But if it's algorithmic, it shouldn't matter. It should just like here's a channel. They got a big show. People are watching it. It's Joe Rogan, but Alex Jones as well. So we do a brand new channel. YouTube knows nothing about. We put a song on it. The song hits. Now it's trending. I wouldn't be surprised if the next time we put a song out, it just for some reason never goes anywhere. Oh, I think the no. next one's going to be bigger. <laughs> well, look, dude, I honestly didn't think it was going to get as many views as it did, you know, and people are acting like, I'm just saying we, we're going to put out songs and if it gets a hundred views, it gets a million views. This, that's the point. It was like, we're just trying to make music. I guess people like this one. I guess a lot of people don't like it, but dude, a lot of people like Nickelback and a lot of people don't like Nickelback. I think that's what wakes people up though. Like if you really think about it, if you guys put out another song and it just gets like throttled, it gets destroyed, it gets censored, whatever. That's kind of like what people are paying attention to. Cause it's like, what does this have to do with politics or this guy's personal politics? It's just a piece of art and I like it, but it's being censored, not even because of what he's saying, but because of who he is. You know, and right. I think that's what people are kind of paying attention to. I think a lot about the, in the Nazi Germany era, they use, what was that musician, that orchestra, really famous German, um, Orchestra. Mahler? Who was it? Was it possibly Mahler? It's the only composer I can think of. No, but Hitler time. used like one of the great German orchestration orchestrators, and like it was really popular. The music. Someone in the chat, you guys got to know this. Um, and so, I don't know. What were your feelings on that? He was supporting the Nazis, creating phenomenal music. Wagner. Yeah. I got, so Wagner was Wagner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is this is an important one. I got to read this. W four flower says, look up biggest industry screw job for Tom. And there are two parts explaining what him and Adam went through with the album, The Brave. Absolutely amazing album, by the way. I read about that. If you look up, go on, if you look up a musician, type in Coldplay Billboard, and what do you'll see? You'll see Coldplay hitting all the billboard. Type in Tom McDonald Billboard, and what do you get? A dead page. Mm. This is why I was, I was like specifically saying Tom McDonald. When, when we were, when, I can't remember what was happening, but we were talking about his music. And I said, let me see, he, this dude's got to be Billboard topping. He's, he's got 30 million hits on one song. It's like a gold record or whatever. His Billboard page is got, it's got no image. It's got no history. And I'm like, well, that's BS. I can look up the chart history. Then I saw Fake Woke was number 96. And I'm like, what's 96? Five million views in a week? Number one digital sales? Bro, the industry does not like outsiders who can circumvent the labels. So I was like, in my that's why I said earlier, and, and in this show, like mm -hmm. everybody just buy his song, make it undeniable, force them. Canine yeah. Therapy Inc. says, Tim, I bought Tom McDonald's single. What's the name of your single? I'm a 68 year old fan, help me out. It's called Only Ever Wanted. To buy it on iTunes, you gotta download iTunes. I know not, not a lot of people wanna deal with that or like Apple, so you know I get it, but I, but I do appreciate all your support. Waffle Sensei says, first hearing your song had an uncanny valley vibe because I see you talk every day. By the third time I've heard it, I could separate you from the song. Dad passed away a little while ago. Now your song makes me think of my mom. Good mm -hmm. song, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it, man. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, the song helps. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Andy Ugaldi says, I hope that you are not using the Super Chat portion of the show to interject your own Super Chat question asking about one of your other projects where you then spend, spend to promote it. Kind of not cool. I don't know what that means. Are, are you arguing that I'm sending myself super chats to read them? That would be weird. I'm kind of just, I kind of just randomly read super chats and sometimes they're like offensive when we get in trouble. But I try, I try to screen them. I try to read them and then say the word after I read it. It's like a, it's like a weird thing you have to do. Dude, you're batting like 999. If you're, that's what, that's pretty effective because you, you're, you're like, everything's really good. The super chats are nice and balanced. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically what I do is I'll look at a super chat. Sometimes there's like a pause. Because I have to read the first three words before I start saying the first three words. Because mm. sometimes, like, I, I get caught up and I'll read something that, like, I, I, I can't read that. Yeah. Like, oh, man, like, YouTube will ban us. You know what I mean? Gannon136 says, I was on that show Revolution as an extra. Such a fun time. But the government and the military faction themes are still sticking with it 10 years later. Very interesting, man. All right. Crab Friend says, it's not a cult or fascism. It's communist Bolshevism. Perhaps. Perhaps. All right, we'll do one more here. Ritpro says, Tim, if you're willing to shout out a YouTube channel, I recently started a Let's Play channel and I'm playing through Bioshock. Oh, Dude, cool. Bioshock is one of the best games ever. You got to check it out. It's like very, it's like very much Atlas Shrugged. My friends, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com and become a member because we're going to have a members only segment coming up and it's going to get particularly brutal and spicy because uncensored, not family friendly. 
You can also click the link in the description below. If you have the iTunes player, it'll pop up. And for 69 cents, you can buy our new single. And um, I think we need to sell like a thousand or I think maybe like eight or 900 singles. And then we're number one on iTunes. I think that's the number. I don't know for sure. She's up against Britney Spears and Elton John. Yeah. Elton John and Britney Spears re-releasing Tiny Dancer. And I'm not surprised we can't beat them. So. Britney yeah. is back. <laughs> She's back, baby. Britney. But uh, uh, if you don't like the song, then, you know, feel free not to buy it. That's how it works. Thank you so much for your support thus far. We're going to be promoting until Thursday because Thursday is the last day of Billboard tracking. And we want to see what we can what we can accomplish with this song. And then we've got a bunch more to come. Drew, you want to shout anything out? Yes. Uh, thank you guys for having me. You guys could follow me on Twitter, Getter, and uh, Truth Social at Drew H Live. I host my show Frontlines five days a week on uh, Real America's Voice. It's actually going to start in about 30 minutes. It's uh, nightly at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there. The links to my show are all in my bio uh, that I just shouted out on Twitter and Getter and all that. So thank you guys. You want to shout anything out, Aldo? Yeah, uh, you can find my reporting um, at Twitter, uh, just at Aldo Budazoni. You can find me on Instagram and Truth Social as well. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for having me. I had a great time. That was awesome. Uh, you guys, hit me up at Ian Crossland, anywhere on the internet, on social media. It's probably me. Make sure it's me before you commit to it. <laughs> See you later. Thank you guys very much for tuning in this evening with Drew and Aldo. I had a great time. A uh, good time getting to know these two guys. You guys can follow me on twitterandminds.com at sarpatchlitz as well as sarpatchlitz.me. We will see you all over at timcast.com. Thanks for hanging out. Bye, guys.